Welcome, we're back. Yes, hey. sound is happening. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, where we play new games on classic consoles at 60 <laughs> frames a second. So make sure you're watching at 60 frames a second on YouTube if you're watching this in the archive. If you're watching live on Twitch, it already is at 60 frames a second. That's right. So we've been uh, we've been away for it's a little been a while. while. For probably a month um take into account either end yeah it um, feels like six months i don't know it feels like a lot has i happened. almost didn't remember the intro there yeah. i was like struggling a little bit and you hear little pauses um, it's like, oh yeah we're doing this again and we oh, have yeah, a show <laughs> yeah but li literally i think it's been about a month yeah that sounds um, about give or take right. a couple days um so we've got a bunch of Tons of things to do today. Lots oh, I imagine. Of lots of catch-up, hey? Cause... Lots of catch-up, lots of news. We've got four games today. We're going to be discussing uh, Harmony Kart versus Uno Kart, which Ooh. is the newish uh, kart on the block for uh, Do we have some games for the two of them? Well, we do have the games for two of them. Uh, we have, we're going to be playing three games on this one, two of which are exclusive for Uno Kart. Oh, shit. So you won't be able to play them unless you have an Uno Kart. And the last one we will be playing on the Harmony Kart. Um, although I think it works on the Uno Kart as well. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll be talking about this versus this. Um, advantages, disadvantages. I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages from my point of view, like mostly from a gamer point of view, not a developer point of view, but we will be getting into that a little bit. Uh, mostly from the perspective of the developers of the two first games we're going to be playing, um, which the people are in the chat today. Oh. Uh, Stormwatcher213, a.k.a. Mayday, and Zach Scolero, a.k.a. Zach Attack on Atari Age. Wow. So they are both in the chat. And Mick Muse is hey. the developer of the fourth game Hey, today. Mick Muse. Damn. Oh, hey, so, I suppose is And I suppose here. is here. He we have just also in this, time. so many people like Dan ABC and Ground Trooper and... Um, uh, who Thrust else? 26. Splendid, uh, Splendid Nut. Nut. Yeah. So it's cool to see all the people. I feel like it's been forever. All, I don't all know. All the old it's, names are there. If anyone wants to tell us like how your life has been, what's been going on, you know. And Gretams is watching, and Gretams. she just subscribed now for eight mo eight months in a row. She's almost to that coveted nine month icon. Oh. So yeah. one more month, and she has got the top tier icon. Ooh. So that's very exciting. I don't know if there's one above that yet. I don't think there's a one year. I haven't made a one year one. It'll keep so, going, though. It'll keep going up. Uh, so, oh, uh, she's already got one. She's ooh, already got yeah, she's got the six-month Golden Z. Yeah, man. I, Z. I, I don't even have a Golden <laughs> Z. This no. is great. Why is Gretem's not listed on the screen? Because she had dropped off, and she had just... Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add her in right now. Oh. Live on the show. Let's see. Subscribers. Uh in order oh they are there's just nobody before ground behind the scenes oh yeah they can actually see me type it wow that's pretty fancy there you go now gretem's is on the list perfect and uh <laughs> you, you should feel special this is eight months coming yeah. up on nine months golden z's <laughs> zeds uh, i don't know zeds in canada mm -hmm. uh, and the rest of the world <laughs> except for the u.s yeah um yeah because she let it lapse i guess maybe for a week or so um but i want to thank all the twitch subscribers that you do see on the screen uh, Gretem's Ground Trooper, Johnny WC23, Mr. Fix, RC70, Retro Happy Hour, Scorpion Illuminati, Spiceware, S. Ramirez 2008, Tiki Dan K, and Tikfos. Scorpion Illuminati. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. I haven't heard that one before. That's great. And you can support the show and subscribe for free if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime and click subscribe. And uh, thank you for Gretem's for resubscribing today. And Ground Trooper said he re-upped last week, knowing mine had dropped off during the break. And it doesn't alert you really? when it drops off. So you got to be on it. So that's, that's why I keep reading it out, so people know if they've for dropped sure. off. For sure. And them. also, it's this nature of us taking a bit of a break. It yeah. had to happen, but it's... it's... Gonna, some people are going to drop off. So the games today we're going to be playing, uh, we've got four. Uh, the first one is Gorilla Force, which is a work in progress. Uh, by Zachary Scalero, uh, a.k.a. Zach Attack, and Jason Davidson, a.k.a. Mayday, who are both in Damn. the chat 
Second one is Wushu Masters, also 2019 work in progress by the same people. So they've, they're working on two games simultaneously. Wow. And they are both for the Uno card exclusively. You can't even run them in Stella. You have to have this card. But they're also not released. These are world exclusives. We have the first. Holy shit. Nobody's man. even seen screenshots of these games. Like these are brand new. Like literally brand new. A build today. I think. Yeah. I, I feel so to... honored, man. I get to do this show and I get to play all these like exclusives. I get to I do know. Galaga it, like it right when it comes out, you know. It's a big it's crazy. Honor. Uh third game. I don't is know what world... I did to deserve this. <laughs> uh, you just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robot Z is our third game. It's 2019 work in progress. Uh, we're going to be playing the demo version of it. It's by Chris Spry, a.k.a. Sprybug, who made Princess Rescue. And uh, uh, I still love how meta that title is. It's so I great. Mean, what is the other name of his game? It's, it's like, uh, it's got it's a like John Wick being like, man shoots people. Yeah. <laughs> Zip, the movie. <laughs> Zippy the Porcupine. Oh, so those yes. Are all both playoffs of other very popular I, titles and Princess Rescue was pulled from the stores. dodging copyright. <laughs> well, it was a couple early screenshots in the forum. Yes, yes, but uh, it's progressed a lot since then. Um, uh, someone, I hope someone will get uh, help us get Stella to get them running. They should be developer making, should also make developing much easier. I do have some comments from Stephen A. Um, about uh, Stella and the Uno cart coming up. Um, and uh, finally, we have Deep Stone Catacomb, 2019 work in progress by Mick Crocker, aka Mick Muse, who is also here in the chat. Ooh, yeah, All the developers are and here. And that one's probably my style, man. That yeah, it's an like... RPG. Yep. For, I'm just. As soon it's as also a world exclusive. As, as soon well. as there's a dungeon, <laughs> you're in. I'm in. I don't even. Swords, dungeon, things to kill. Actually, there's certain. There's a certain kind of dungeon I'm not in. But there's if there's a if there's a fantasy dungeon where you can like loot things, I'm so yeah. in. Oh yeah, we'll be having a lot of fun with that. So we have a poll question today. It relates relates to. It's not a D make. It's original. No, it's it is it is an original. It's not a take off of anything. Cool. It has influences. From games we'll get into that when we get there um so the uh poll today is has to do with the harmony cart and uno cart so let me put that up we're very on theme today mm. let me put that up on the screen for everyone start the poll boom okay so just type Whoa. one number i remember you used to have to like do a bit more that's no it's easy that's prepped Click. done um so this is the question what type of multi-cart do you have just type one number in the chat um, number one, I have a Harmony or Harmony Encore. This one, this one's a Harmony Encore. Um, uh, number two, I have an Uno cart. Uh, number three, I have a Harmony and Uno cart, which I would be selecting. So I will type that in the chat right now. That's three for me. Uh, selection four, old school only. I have a Star Path, Cuddle Cart, or Crocodile Cart. Um, to do Whoa. two numbers, select two. Yeah, I, th I think it's one comma four or one space four. I don't think one and four. It won't register that. Or it'll only register the one. Um, number five, I have a dip switch multi-cart, which you can't load things on. It's just built in. And yeah. you just select which game. And number six, I have no multi-cart at all. That's you only mean. have the original games. You have no multi-cart at all? No. no? Oh. You actually have no Atari 2600 no at all. No Atari. Your, your Ataris are... You borrow get, them here. Yeah. Come and play them here. So people are already voting. That's awesome. Um, oh, the poll. The polls are the poll is up on the screen already. Okay. Well, we'll just leave it up on the screen as, the, as it comes in. Yeah, see, the numbers, you can't type one and four. Because um, those are not registering. Nothing's coming in for four. I think you have to type one comma four or one space four so try again if you are selecting one four uh, polls are always tricky technology it's beautiful but yeah. it's challenging so one comma four dan avc just put in is uh, it updating I think, no one comma space four or one space four anyway you guys figure, <laughs> just... you guys figure it out you guys can see the poll on the screen <clears throat> so mail news and feedback obviously we were away for a while mm -hmm. um i went to two places uh las vegas first and then new york city that's right um both for purposes obviously i didn't randomly go there 
that's a stupid statement. Um, for Las Vegas, uh, went on to gamble away all your money, and that we did. <laughs> no, we on uh, an unrelated note, zero page homebrew is asking is for no. lots of donations. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I do this show out of the charity of my heart. So, <laughs> um, but uh, Tanya did gamble. Tanya and I went to Las Vegas for our anniversary. Um, it is our third. It's our 11th wedding anniversary. We've been wow. together 13 years. I, we got married on the same day we met and the same day I proposed to her. Makes it very simple. <laughs> so, James is structured in very all organized. choices in life. Very organized. <laughs> Tanya yeah. as well. It's so great. She liked it. She likes it. Oh, it's, it's romantic and easy to remember. It's so perfect. It's so you guys. That's what yes. I love about it so much. <laughs> and uh, we went to the um, pinball... Um, pinball Museum, I Whoa. think it is, in uh, Las Vegas, and it had so many pinball games, more than I've ever seen anywhere, uh, even in Portland, because they have a big mix of, of pinball and uh, arcade games. Um, the Pinball Museum had arcade games, but only like a couple. They did have Galaga there. Did and, they? and I did get over 100,000 in arcade Galaga, so I'm very, very happy with that. Damn. And I also did very well on Miss Pac-Man. I posted the Miss Pac-Man video on uh, the uh, Zero Page Instagram, so you can go see it there. I still need to post the uh, my scores on Galaga. Um, so we had a lot of fun at the Pinball Museum, and we played a ton of pinball games. It was just, it wasn't a free play, but actually it turned out to be a lot cheaper than if we paid like $15 for all day because we didn't stay long enough to to play up to 15 I think we just spent like 7 or $10. But hey man, lot. 7 or $10 to hang out and play in an, on like a real arcade is... Oh yeah. I mean, we, I don't know anywhere in Vancouver you can do that. You would know, but like... There's some smattering of games and pinball machines, but not like a big one in Vancouver, yeah. unfortunately. Um, that would be awesome. I would love that. <laughs> Let's leave that off. Yeah, it's um, not gonna. Well, there's no wind blowing through here. <laughs> not year. a lot of wind happening. There's it's very windy outside. Though. Oh hell yeah! Um, and then we went. Uh, oh, also in Vegas, there was an arcade that had a massive uh, Galaga game. Like, it's dubbed the biggest Galaga game Shit, in the world. Man. It was floor to ceiling the screen, and it was made of little lights. Like you could actually see the the pixels, and. Um, that was super fun because it was just massive. So I got a lot of Galaga playtime in, which was great. I got a lot of practice and and had done better than I'd ever done before. So for the twelve hour stream, you're you're tuned. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm to ready like for push. play some more Galaga. <laughs> um, Galaga for oh, life. Caps here as well. R.I.P. Lester's, so which was an arcade locally here. Um, and then we went to the New York to New York, New York City. And I was there for just under two weeks. And we went there because my um, film had its New York City premiere there in Times Square in the AMC theaters, which was really exciting because New York City, that's a, that's a huge place. And we had a whole bunch of the uh, people that were in the film, in the documentary there. And we got so many great photos. If you want to see those photos of Someone, me all dressed up, yeah. you can go to... The Instagram or Facebook of a perfect fourteen one four, and you can check that out. So that was a lot of fun. How many years did you spend working on that film? Five years, and and now we've been touring it for about three quarters of a year through the film yeah. festivals all over the world. So well, that's been it's amazing. A, it's a neat movie because it is like a homebrew movie. Yeah, it's we, a good way to like describe it because I mean, doing a feature film shouldn't take five years the reason why it takes <laughs> no. five years is because there were basically two people working on it and that was it yeah the core group was just myself and the director giovanna and it was just us for i'd say 90 yeah. percent of the film we had some camera people but i did i did camera and sound and edited it and produced it and she was a writer director and and you know, we both carried all of our equipment all over Europe and, and inter Australia. And just interview and after interview. Like, how many interviews did you do? 200 <laughs> interviews over five years. And uh, Erlen here did the color on the I film. Did. And uh, then uh, I guess a little bit of post management, too, because we did a lot of, like, you know. There yeah, was... a lot of, you know, putting pieces together and, and, and to... preparing it for the theaters. 
making sure it looks good and sounds good and yeah, all the pieces. And getting all the graphics and sound and all kind of like... <laughs> Thrust says, homebrews can take five years too. It's true, man. Some of the ones on the show, I think, have gone up to like 10 years between builds. So they take a long time. Yeah. Because it, it's not their full-time job, you know. So they do it on their spare time. And that's kind of how it was with us too. We weren't getting paid for it. It was an independent film. Yeah, you just so slowly... these are all independent games, you know. Put your heart and soul into it, and all yeah. your time. And Kev said he remembers seeing you with your gear at the Canada Day. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we filmed ex quite extensively in the Lower Mainland because in Vancouver. Sorry, Lower Mainland doesn't make any sense to anybody out here in Vancouver, Canada, um, because one of our subjects um, lived here. Yeah, two of our subjects, and and then she went to New York. But uh, yeah, got a great reception at the festival, um, like. The, the the audience there really was laughing and clapping and gasping and crying and, and oh the whole yeah. whole range of emotions uh, and, it, and it's been cool watching the the film progress because i remember um you I, the first cut i saw of it was just a rough version that was like two two and, two, and a half hours <laughs> two and a half, actually i think it was longer i think the very 45 i think so and then it, it the the, the yeah. theatrical is like one 145 yeah which is like cool to see yeah. like you know what what does it feel like with an hour out and it's the same story it's not like it's, it's any more concise much better watch there you go thank you storm watcher um, yeah, it's a documentary, yeah. a feature documentary. That's He's just in New York, true. like yep. doing it. That's why we're giving updates. It's like that's why right. we're gone. All dressed up for my premiere, looking good. Some really nice photos. I'm really happy with how yeah. the photos turned out there. But back to Atari. Um, also, Dan Kitchen, um, the person who made Crackpots and uh, back in the day, and uh, uh, a bunch of other really high profile <laughs> Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. Um, he came to the uh, New York premiere, and I've got pictures of him up there as well. Actually, I posted on the um, Zero Page Homebrew. Uh, yeah, I Facebook. remember I saw it. It's like the only thing I've ever liked. On, on the <laughs> That's thing. right. I, I saw so, you like it. I was so stoked because it was like two worlds combining. It's yep. my favorite. And uh, yeah, I, w I went out for dinner with him, and I saw some new pictures from Gold Ooh. Rush. Oh my God, that game is going to be fun when we get to play that. So that's progressing really quickly, and I. He uh, he said it's coming soon, very very Ooh. soon. So I'll be able to put out uh, the interview I did with him, and then we'll follow up immediately with the game itself, and that'll be amazing. Um, so some uh, news: Atari X programming environment. Somebody put out a new development um, a program for making Atari games, and this one's really different. Uh, this one's called the Atari X programming environment. Um, oh, I don't have the person's name. That is not good. Um, but I have the link, so I'm going to bring that up. What it is, is a visual development um, kit for making Atari games very high level. Like, there's no, not even any programming in it yet. Not, no typing. Um, it allows you to make the background, like the play field. allows you to make your characters and visually, like, pick them up and place them oh, this is on probably, the play it's... field. Like, it's, it's made for, like, people who know nothing about programming. So I think that's going to be a really good introduction to Atari games for people. Uh, oh, it's posted by Luri Neri. L-U-R-I-N-E-R-Y. Um, so I'll read what he said about that. Uh, the video showcases some of the tools. Oh, that's... The main goal of Atari X is to help newbies get into Atari game development. This is not what he said. That's what I would say. Um, <laughs> and also for advanced users... Oh, maybe he did say this. Yeah, for advanced users to build some prototypes so you can export assembly code and add more advanced stuff into your game. So it's a good... He's, he's saying it's good for people who know nothing because you can kind of make a game with it. But it's also good for people who do know a, lo a lot about programming to just use it to draw your characters and get your base of your game going. It's like a little little jump start. Yeah, so it takes care of the basics for you so you don't have to type it all out. So, yeah, Keystone Capers was made by um, uh, Dan Kitchen's brother. Yeah. Wow. Um, Gary Kitchen, who is very, very famous as well <laughs> in his own right. And I met him in uh, uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo last year. 
It's so crazy that families have that. There's sort of a vibe that families get. I yeah. mean, especially brothers and sisters. And I, I think it's environment. When yeah. It, like opportunities given to you or, you know, it's just something available to you and, and sharing of knowledge either from the parents or between the siblings. And if they're Obviously. close enough in age, who they probably played games together and exactly yeah. grew up doing these things. Um, so it has a play field editor, an object editor, a HUD, which allows you to pick a font and a color for the t six digit score. Um, next thing he's going to work on is the logic part of the object editor, which will allow developers to add properties to the objects, like collisions, input, without having to write a single line of code. So it's all going to be just clicking the mouse and, and typing in numbers. It's like, how does this object um, interact with the other one? Does it bounce backwards? Does it injure you? Does it kill you? Does it take um, a health from you? Does it give you something? I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Welcome to 2020. Yeah, poll, poll is not registering option four. It also, I think the poll only takes your first input. And then it's like, it's done with you. Sorry, friends. So, I mean, you guys typed it. It's in the chat. So. Yeah, Stormwatch nailed it. That's how, I think, I think that's the case too. Is because you already voted for three. Yeah, it's a very sensitive This is poll. why polling is... <laughs> Inaccurate. <laughs> At least this poll. This is what we learned in politics. That's right. Polls will, will only get you so far. Um, this is from a couple weeks ago before we were off. Uh, when we played... Um, uh, what is the game? Halo 2600. Oh, yeah, that was a fun game, man. And I missed this. And you crushed that game, I remember. You did pretty good, pretty quickly. You yeah. did very well. I was, that was one of the, one of the times at the show I was just in awe. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank God James is here. Because I, I tried to do it, and my, my skill level at these games is not as high as yours with certain things. Different games a, we're good at. Because there's right. a style of, of, and I was like, and I, I was surprised we you're beat that one. You're helping with the maze. Because you're really good at oh, yeah, um, dungeon crawling, RPGs, where you have to memorize where to go. So you were my, my, my navigator. I was, your, I was the cartographer. But there, but there was a, a fair amount of action and yeah. quick movement, which I'm not bad at. Especially when you had to get those upgrades and there was like the oh. room with like four people. And hey, that was a fun game. And oh, it, it, Thrust is like, didn't we poll for the awards too? Oh, margin of error. No, oh, no. those were totally different polls that, that's, where you could change your answers too. And that's, that's, Ooh. and that's vetted over. <laughs> that's right. Don't worry. That was a bit more accurate. I can't. Because polling is just, you just like, whoever wants to answer, answers. It's a yeah. fun little thing. This is just a fun poll. This is not going to be used for anything official. Um, that's, that's a funny post though. Yeah. I like that thrust. Uh, he's, this is from S Ramirez. Um, he says, hi James, looks like I won't be able to join the live stream this Wednesday. This is for the Halo 2600 episode. Yeah. So I thought I'd share the story. I purchased my copy several years back, which both of my sons were younger and really into Halo. Upon arrival, I quickly showed them the box cart and they kind of laughed. Uh, we mm. popped in the cart and were suddenly treated to the splash screen and the Halo theme. And now I had their interest. We ended up making a simple map and playing the game until each of one of us beat it. It's very, very achievable. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's like, it, yeah, it'll take you some time, but it's, it's a, you can do it in one it's, sit down. It's a nice down. balance. It's not easy, but it's not too hard. I had my personal copy said, uh, signed by Ed Freeze, the developer of it, wow. um, at the 2017 Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And last year I purchased just two boxed copies, knowing that Ed would attend the Houston uh, Arcade Expo. I brought them to the expo and he signed each one and I gave them to my sons as a present. Side note, I met Arena Foot at last year's Houston Arcade Expo. Lucky. Yeah. Zero Page Homebrew is excellent. Now for the praise. Um, oh, man. Thank you all for providing our community with your live streams. I don't know how you find the time to do one or two per week. I don't. I don't have the time, but I'd make time anyway. So, yeah, especially this week. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it was a nightmare. Uh, but appreciate it. By the way, do you know that the community will support you whether you do one per week or one per month? I, I, I hope they would, but I don't want to do that few. Oh, thanks, I want to Militant do, Buddhist. I want to do two per week. This is the only Twitch I watch. Wow. Thank you very much, Militant Buddhist. I mean, this is a very niche <laughs> live stream. It's not even 2,600. It is homebrew 2,600 games. It's niche within a niche within a niche. Um, and Zach, same here. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, thanks again, and here's a picture of my signed copy. I am supposed to speak in truth in the chat right now. See? He said, at least streams don't need editing. Uh, yeah, and that's why I kind of 
gravitated towards because I did do some editing, edited stuff in the beginning. Yeah. And it was just too much right now for me because uh, I was doing reviews and I, so... I don't mind doing the interviews because they're kind of linear and I just put B-roll, so it's not too not too hard. And they're like kind of almost like cultural artifacts for this community. Yeah, so I don't mind doing that. It's... And other people do reviews online about yeah. homebrew games already, so I don't feel I need to fulfill that role. And I think this is more a unique um, thing that we're doing, which is live. We have the developers in the chat. We get the exclusive games. Like it's nobody done... else is doing that. Right and now. you've always done live shows. Oh, like always. Forever. And I love and I love live because it's. You can do a lot with... And, and then you get to go home and... Yeah, low effort, high reward. We have instant feedback. There's there's engagement, which is which is awesome. I love that. Um, and, um, I imagine when you're probably working on the documentary, you probably the live show stuff dropped off. Yeah, I didn't do anything live during that time. Um, um, uh, Mick Muse says, this is my first Twitch video I've watched. Yeah. He, he was asking, how do I do it? How do I make a login? And it's like, here, here, how you do it? Thrust 26, me too. Plus revision party once a year. Wow. So these people are like, this is, these are this our is, people, man. This is all they watch. I'm ABC. so, I watch this stream and one from local arcade by me when they do Mondays. Oh, local arcade near you. Okay. When they do Mondays. Very, very cool. Um, the Galaga demo was released while we're away. Oh, while we're off. shit. So now everybody gets to play it, which is wonderful. That's everybody good. What do to... you guys think of it? I imagine. I can't, I can't oh imagine. God. People are just, their minds are exploding. I mean, they saw it on the stream, obviously. Yeah. Um, we but were, now they get to actually play it. I, we were driving around yesterday, and I think I said, like, I'm like, man, John Chempo is just like, you know, next year's Atari Awards. It's, it's going to be a tough go. It's going to be a tough gig again. <laughs> it's like he swoops it. Because, I mean, how do you compete with Galaga? Yeah, it's we're, just... We're going to be adjusting the um, categories so that there's um, some, some possibility of people, like... Th that one could be like best port. It's such a perfect storm. Is best the... um, arm, um, arm game like arm chip uh, supported game because some people don't use the arm chip and uh, yeah, there's going to be different categories so people have a category to win. Splendid Nut says Galica twenty six hundred is fantastic. Mick Muse looks great, very impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, well, I feel cool because it's the first time I ever got to like play Galaga. Yeah. Ever. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing so it was cool to like get my intro to it and to, like to literally open it up and and try it out and i'm in awe that you got what a hundred thousand in the arcade in the arcade i i still have to do that in the home home but version. but i mean that that possibility i think yeah, getting better uh john champo said thank you everyone for the kind words on galaga we're glad everyone's enjoying the demo it looks like the ntsc and pal 60 demos have been downloaded almost 500 times Whoa. in less than two days I mean, way more now. I mean, it's been uh, about a week or two weeks since that. So, obviously, people are going nuts over it. And I suppose says, I got the Galaga full version with the two-player, the one we have, and he found a bug, too. Oh, good. You got to let him know about it. Yeah, I'm, good. Sure, I'm sure he has. And, um, yeah, it's good to release these demos so that people can play the hell out of it and, and make comments and that's improvement. A, it's so fun that that's a thing, you know. I, mm -hmm. I, it's frustrating that a lot of game developers um, will just sort of Don't release do that. a game. Yeah, and, and then, like, then people are like, oh. Especially when God. you spend like 80 bucks, you know. Like, oof, like oof, yes. that's the high end. Yeah. Um, so uh, Atari Age has redone its forums um, just a couple days ago. How do you like them so far? They look gorgeous. Like, really clean now. Um, there's really a lot better um, alert systems for things that have been posted. Um, you can tell really easily when where the new posts start, with ones that you haven't seen. Um, it's still populating the database right now, so some of the f like pictures and attachments aren't there for downloading. But he, uh, Al's been updating the community on how the progress has gone. And he just figured out a way to speed it up. Yeah. Yeah, the migration. Still processing the migration, um, Thomas says. Yes, so it's not completely populated yet with everything. And I will have to get him to give me um, permission to edit my posts. Yeah, that's um, pretty important. Because I can't update my, my zero page post with what I'm going to be playing in the upcoming. I haven't had to do it now, and I wanted to leave him alone because he's got... Oh, my oh God. He God. hasn't been off the computer <laughs> answering questions about the 
the uh, forum migration. So he's busy. I'd rather I'd rather just let him let him do that. But I will have to bug him um, probably tomorrow because I do have to make updates because I'll be posting yeah, this you, show tomorrow. Are you doing a Friday show this week? I'm, yes. Yeah, you're. And jumping. that's also kind of an update I want to give to people as well. The show is going to kind of change, but not change at all. Uh, Wednesdays will be new day, <laughs> new game day. It's with, when I'm here. Yeah, um, and Fridays will be um, like challenges, like high score challenges of games we've already played, or Activision patch challenge days. It's a hangout day. It's a hangout day. There's not. It's not going to be serious. It's going to be laid back. We're not going to be like going over in depth games. Uh, we're going to be revisiting games and 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 trying to do fun things with so i guess games. the like exclusive releases and the things like that we will be wednesdays. On wednesdays yep and then we'll go in depth into games on fridays which is good because it's yeah i feel like sometimes with the show there are definitely games where it's like oh we, we just can't yeah and and i want to pack in all the new games right because they get really so <laughs> much really you should play the games we <laughs> recommend good or bad that's for the 12 hour marathon hell yeah that's man. when you get to punish us that's with the when bad we gotta games. do it man yeah et day yeah. nothing but et <laughs> it's I'm, 12 I'm hours in. of et oh my god we get very good at it <laughs> um and so so that's so the we're still gonna have two shows a week um but it lessens the load on me so i can put more effort into the wednesday show and have a more uh, in-depth full show about the development of these games and also at the t same time friday allows us to go in-depth playing the games it'll be concentrated on one or two games <laughs> custer's revenge oh my god the... i don't think Dude, i'd ever did... play that on the stream man if we it's did an et day there wouldn't be so much rage as much as it would just be like either me or James fucking googling, being like, "What is this thing? What is yeah. this?" And we would be, we would we would. For it's a fine game. We it's, crack, it's an adventure game. It's an we, RPG. We crack the code, but it would be <laughs> it would be crazy. Could we, as in a community effort, try to make a game that is worse worse than ET? You have to try it's hard. Not, it's not. It's a good game, so it's just it's a little buggy. It's not super... He didn't have a lot of time. Anyway, there's well, the a million th but, stories written about E.T. Well, yeah, but I think... Bad the, collision detection. But the it. thing about that game is it's this idea that, like, you are playing something that is, like, you don't... It's like trying to do something without the rule book. Like, the, what, I think what made well, E.T. Yeah, yeah. the nightmare was that... People there, didn't read the rule. There, there was no... Manual. Yeah, so you would have this, like, it was kind of like trying to, like, play a game of chess against the computer, but you've never, there's no How indication. How come I can't move this piece Why that is way? this doing, you know, it's like, it's, and that's what what makes it so, so crazy. But I think now, in, like, the era of the internet, it would probably actually be just almost boring, because we just, like, yeah. Google it, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, Go. and, and Ground Trooper said there is a fixed version of the E.T., so they've corrected and all Stop the E.T., hey. It's so <laughs> notorious. It's like, E.T.'s, it, e. like, I was going to say, the Nickelback of, but that's probably not that true. No, because E.T. was a big franchise, big expectations mm -hmm. and and disappointment mm -hmm. that that what they got. Um, just playability wise, the actual game is not bad. Um, so we have the Stella fundraiser coming up in two weeks. Amazingly, <laughs> not this Friday, but the Friday after. One week. Oh my god, is it one week or two yeah, weeks? Yeah, man, I supposed to the 2600 Pac-Man. Oh my god, it's in one week. Okay, I gotta get moving on this. The 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 12 hour? <laughs> yes, so it's yeah, not this it's Friday, crazy. it's next Friday, so I gotta get some things arranged. Um, so we have a bunch of donation uh, uh, items for auction that'll be being auctioned on that day. And this is for Stella we're uh, raising money for because it's so incredibly useful for developers and for people playing, because it's an emulator, you can play all the games on it. And so Daryl Spice Jr. is, a, is donating a bunch of stuff, and there's some pending items from John Champeau, Albert wow. Uruso, and Dan Kitchen as well. And um, anybody else that wants to donate an item, all the money goes to um, Stella, and um, Stephen A., uh, the maintainer, will be... Uh, doling that out as necessary for buying hardware and being able to dedicate more time to it because time is money because yep. if you're not making money 
uh, you're detracting time from your job where you could be making money. So, so it's why these time this is, money. is difficult. Yeah, man. I was just gonna respond to the chat like that Pac-Man game. It was when we did the whole Pac-Man day and we did yeah. the evolution of like <laughs> it was the, so obvious that yeah. like this is not this is not cutting it. <laughs> This is no like, early Pac-Man. This is it's a strange thing. It's like those like people order those like you know those those like bags online. That's like supposedly a canvas bag and like the photos a like, canvas. Oh. And then you get it. It's like this like Classic. nylon. And you're like what? That's how I, I that's what the Pac-Man looked like. It's like where's my canvas bag? <laughs> but luckily the twenty like the updated ones are insane. Oh, there really was good. it was just basically like playing the real thing. Yeah. Um, so during the marathon, we're going to be playing homebrew games that we're going to try and beat. We're going to try and finish some games. We're going to try to get high scores. Um, some crazy challenges, like um, staying on getting the high score and getting a really high score and just staying on level one of Draconian. We're going to be trying to finish Night Guy in Low Res World, Spies in the Night 2, uh, KO Boxing, AVGN KO Boxing, Lost Cat, Hunchy 2, Isaiah's Wii Chase, I'm going to try and get back my world record on Wall Jump Ninja yeah, this and be, Crazy Balloon. This is both to be tough, but... I'm going to try and increase my world record on Draconian. I'm trying to get the patch on uh, Astronomer. And we're going to try and beat Deanoid's high score on Amoeba Jump. Damn! So lots of things to do in the 12 hour. And I'm going to try and get um, some of the developers on on the chat during the 12 hour we're gonna have like a little monitor here where i have actually ordered an hdmi to composite whoa adapter so that we'll have like a crt sitting somewhere um maybe in between here let will sit in the back there so like they're with us almost be, that'll be lots of fun so you'll be able to see them yep you'll be able to see them we're gonna have lots of snacks order pizza all that kind of stuff um, Milton Buddha says, I submit Mountain King. So save your suggestions. And you for said when that, um, Tanya will be coming halfway through. Yeah. You'll be here. Darcy will be here. I'll be here for the whole thing. Tanya will be here around six o'clock coming in for, uh, to pick us up and, and what, what, uh, when do we start? What is it? Support? It's like 10 to 10 or like 12 to 12. Oh, it's, it's noon to midnight Perfect. Pacific time. So that's 3 PM to 3 AM Eastern time. So very late, but it is a Friday. So you guys can stay up for that. That'll and awesome. I don't know what time it is. It's like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. GMT. I think that'll so be... Six. Th six. That'll, that'll be yeah. easy on us. 12 yeah. to 12. Oh, yeah, yeah. 10 to it 10 would be, be the easiest. It 12, would 12 be. to 12 is totally cool. Totally doable, yeah. So the first game we're going to be playing uh, today is uh, Gorilla Force Ooh. by Zack Attack. And J and oh, I didn't update that by Zachary Scalero, aka Zach Attack, and Jason Davidson, aka Mayday. Ooh. And um, so I don't know which order we should do this in. I think we're going to kind of start playing the games. At least we'll play one game first. Cool. And then we'll get into the discussion of Harmony and Uno Kart um, and the differences between them. And which, right now, you should buy, um, in our opinion, and maybe some other people's opinion, as a player, maybe not a developer, um, and you can form your your opinion um, out there as a developer, because I don't develop, and I don't know the, the fine details about developing on each, because I have not done them. And... Um, yeah, and this is for advanced programming. Um, both of these will support basic programming without the DPC style ARM chip and, and uh, all the other types of CDF and CDFJ advanced um, programming uh, styles. So if you're just doing basic, they're both the same, but we'll get into that. Um, so let's start in with the first exclusive Uno card game Ooh. ever. Shit, released really? ever seen yes um there may have been demos put out on the uno card but this is the first full-fledged type type game um and it is made by zach attack and mayday so let's pop that in will it work on regular stella no it won't so Ooh. you have to own an uno card neither of the first two games work on stella yet so the only way you'll be able to play this game when they release the ROM of it 
is if you have an Uno card, or by the time they release it, um, Stella has some support for Uno. Not exactly a selling point. Well, if you're buying the game and giving the money, it would be on a cartridge, so you won't need either of these things. Good point. So, he's not getting any money <laughs> if you if you play, play it on Stella. But that's what we're here for, to show you um, the game. And maybe it'll convince you to get an Uno cart. Maybe you'll be like, that's kind of cool. Um, so, let me get this going. And I am going to show you something very interesting as well. Uh, yeah, it has nothing actually to do Why with the Why is there a box. Halo overlay? Oh, because we're talking about Halo for a second. And I will turn that off because we're done with that. Uh, and the uh, poll is pretty much done. Um, so 54% say they have a Harmony or Harmony Encore. 0% say they have an Uno cart. Uh, and and there was a few, quite a few fours in there. That there didn't, were didn't that didn't make up. it. Um, and three uh, have a harmony and Uno card is forty five percent, which makes a lot of sense that most people wouldn't just have an Uno card because they would be. If you're gonna lean that forward, I'm, I probably won't lean too far, <laughs> but it's just... um, because they, a developer would already probably have a harmony card, and if they bought a Uno card, it would be an add on. And, and the Uno card's very new. So, let me make sure. Why isn't this working? Uh, oh, yeah. Everything is very new. Oh, I think I know why. Maybe I have the wrong input. Bear with me. Let's go back to RB, RGB. Or I was already on there. Oh, that's really nice. Pixel. The cat has stepped on my RGB output. Oh my god. It's better not have broken it. Uh, sorry, Alex. Or we are very screwed. One second. I am going to disconnect everything. Some quick troubleshooting, friends. Because, yeah, Pixel was fucking around, like, right by the... This is all loose. Uh-oh. But I think it's self-contained. Like it's not like broken off a board. Yeah, the glue has come off of it. Oh boy. And of course, it's live on stream. Okay, well. There, I popped it back into place. Yeah, well, let's jump back in, see what we can do. Yeah, this is not good. That's why I don't like the cats walking back there. So, bear with me, people. Let's see if the cat has destroyed my video. It would my Atari. <laughs> oh no! Just one second. Yeah, we're gonna try the the regular operation. Oh, oh. Uh, sorry, okay. Yeah, we're it good. It's not broken. Yay! The worst thing ever that could have happened almost happened, and we're back. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> okay, so I have. As, as a preface, oh, why is the halo back? Why is that still there? Oh, because I didn't switch it over. There we go. Sorry. Very annoying. Um, so I've been working with Zack Attack for a couple months now, getting things ready for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> so don't say I don't do research. This is and a lot of work. This is a lot of work to get that's episodes, an, that's special crazy episodes. crazy that... They can't see that yet, but... <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I'm reacting to the future. To things they can't see. Sure. Um, so I have had to, we've had to do a little bit of reworking because the Uno cart's new. These games are brand new, um, so these are. And that's why they're not released yet for the general public. 
Um, so he has had to make a custom menu screen <laughs> wow. that I can select Sees the games a from. Bit. Yeah. And there we go. So here, now you can see it now. And so you can see the date. Oh, what is creepy crawlies are happening, but that looks like digital. No, it's not, it's not me. It's the, yeah, it's easy to get scared just from our, uh, uh, or not. Anyway, disregard that. Things, yeah, man, we're still figuring out all this stuff. It'll yeah. it, just ignore that. So he has made a um, custom screen there, and it also seems to be happening just there. So yeah. I think that's something else um, because it's like um, interlaced, and so yeah, it's your TIA chip. Don't bag on my TIA chip. What's uh, what's what's the TIA chip, James? Um, that's the uh, chip that the video chip in the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Ah, cool. There we go. It probably is. Like I need to look at my Twenty Six Hundred. It it does weird things and pisses off the developers. That's also <laughs> the there's some timing off. Timing that's off. That's the charm of oh, no, of nice. having a what is it? Forty year old it needs to be work. It needs to be warmed up. Yeah, forty year old system. Yeah, it's analog, man. You just gotta. You just Forty two, gotta... wow. almost. 41 and a half. It's uh, September 11th, <laughs> 1977. 9-11, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, 1977 though. Um, so he made a custom uh, screen for me. And here you go. Oh and shit, which so one are we doing? allows selections. Yeah, it's getting better now. It's all warmed up. So yeah, the first game is Gorilla Force. We also have Wushu Masters on here. And he included Robot Z Demo in the this custom. that's so nice that it's a package for us it makes it <laughs> yeah. so much easier well we couldn't do it any other way and this is these games are actually loaded on to the flash memory of the cartridge so that sd cart sd card in there is i can pull it out and this would still load whoa yeah so this is very very custom um so let's get into uh let me let me just read a little okay, bit cool. before, before we I go, go. Um, so this is from Zach Attack. Uh, Gorilla Force and Wushu Masters are games that Jason, Mayday, and I have been working on for a while. These games are what I do to relax when I need a, a break from more demanding software projects. It all started with Wushu Masters. Oh, okay, so that was first. I did find a thread that they kind of hijacked from somebody else who really? was kind of working on a similar project. And then they went, oh, that's really cool. Let's start, let's make that into a game. Uh, originally, I was mostly just interested in the hardware aspects of the system and just see, wanted to see how far it could be pushed. I never really planned on making an actual game. Then I saw a post from Mayday on a Mortal Kombat topic. And that's what it was. Yeah. Um, so uh, Wushu Masters is kind of a Mortal Kombat uh, inspired game. Was Mortal Kombat... Go ahead. I was going to say, was Mortal Kombat the first style game of that? I mean, it must have not been. I mean, it was the no, most no, popular no. one I can no, remember. St Street Fighter was the big, there you go, was Street, the big uh, breakout game. Yeah. I mean, Street Fighter 2 was the big hit, but Street Fighter came before that. And then, that's a, that style of, um, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's a combat one-on-one -on -one 2D stuff. kind of. I think Pit Fighter might have been before Mortal Kombat for the digitized look of the characters. Because um, Mortal Kombat was was like a scan of somebody like a photo yeah and that's that was that new style and street fighter was like pixel art yeah uh he had posted some very ambitious mock-ups and i thought to myself challenge accepted since then we've been tossing ideas back and forth and slowly put together some games wushu master was put aside for a while because of uncertainty about bus stuffing oh. so wushu masters is actually a bus stuffing game um one of the very very few that is actually seriously being worked on because there are issues with bus stuffing at the moment and the issues are it is does not work on every single system so a lot of developers have been like we're not doing it because yes. it will fail our game will not work on some systems notably the atari 2600 junior not all of them and the atari 7800 and not all of those i think so yeah it's kind of difficult you know you buy a game It'll have to have a warning on it if they ever put out Wushu Masters or if they can figure out how to get around these bugs. Yeah. So that is a challenge, too. But if they can't get around it, they'll have to say it does not work. Not fully compatible with Atari 2600 Absolutely. Junior and 7800. So it'll work for a lot of people, but not, not some people. 
Oh, and thank you, Sound Wizard, for subscribing to Twitch Prime. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. That's a new name. And then uh, it's saying Karate Champ was another old school. Yes, that came well, well before. And that is um, uh, a judo-based game um, where it's, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, and there's a judge, and he goes, point, half point, and it's like digitized sound, too. Because to me, the two style of games that were like that that I grew up and loved playing was Soul Calibur and Gauntlet. Those were the two mm. that were like... Um, I never was a Mortal Kombat guy. Uh, cause well, it was, Gauntlet's uh, a top-down three-quarters view. No, no, that's Gauntlet Legends. Oh, those are so new. Gauntlet... Think about Gauntlet Gaunt Arcade. <laughs> Gauntlet is like... Uh, it's like a two... It's the same style, but it's like a fighting game. Oh, that's exactly okay. the, the style of those. And those were... And Soul Calibur is new, but I'm, I'm showing my age. <laughs> you are. But it is... Young age, yeah. But I do remember that that was the the to me like the be and really the tail end of that stuff too. Mm. I don't know if they make games like that as much no, anymore. No, no. I mean, they do some crazy Marvel fighting things where they have a whole bunch of characters. But yeah, um, and international karate was also very an early um, one on one fighting. Um, uh, Gorilla F Gorilla Force was an idea I had to show off. Some amazing horizontal scrolling action without the need of bus stuffing. Ooh. So the first one we'll be playing does not have bus stuffing. Because I actually tried Wushu Masters on, I, on my Atari 2600 Junior. Yeah? And it just it just no. doesn't work. doesn't work. So that's an issue. Uh, we went back and forth between targeting the Harmony. Where's my Harmony? This one. Targeting the Harmony, which is wide adoption, um, and our own custom hardware mostly because I was having trouble finding out technical information needed to write my own drivers for the Harmony card. Like, this guy is all about the hardware, too, and software. Um, then one day I saw the post for the Uno cart. Immediately knew that we found a solution to our hardware question, because the Uno cart is open source. You can change the firmware to, to suit what you need to do with your game, a la bus stuffing or anything else you want to do. Um, and the Harmony cart is right now closed source, so you can't get inside and see what makes this tick at the moment. You're only provided with, you know, the information you need to make the game. Uh, the Uno, oh, it goes right into the say that. The Uno <laughs> cart is open source and uses a much more powerful ARM microcontroller. It runs at a higher clock, has more RAM and more flash ROM, is open source, and the dev tools are available for Windows. I ordered an Uno cart and the USB device to program it, and started modifying the firmware so it could support running a uh, custom ARM code, which I have loaded onto my system. Like I have like a very advanced uh, firmware on my system that nobody else has except for the developers is too, so we can play these games. But it's open source, so that that stuff that he's developing for the cart can be incorporated into the main branch. This is great it. news. Yeah, it's great. It opens up more um, availability for new programmers getting into it. Hence, the greatness of open source. It, the, the community can contribute. Not that the community can't contr contribute to Harmony, but they can't do it as directly and well, yeah, play around I with think it. that's something we learned from the internet. I mean, that old design model of you have an architect or a designer that's sort of the genius single person who's yeah, going to... Which can you be know, good. There's an, there's something to be said. It's 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 very straightforward. Everybody's on the same track. There's it's no a, weirdness happening. But but it ultimately is fascism. Like it's yeah. It's it's an intro, and then you get into this this. It's like a Apple and Windows versus Linux, right? It's that same it's, same kind of environment. It's like Apple and Windows is like you can boot it up, you run it, the program will run. That's right. They make it really easy. It's it's a click kind of thing. But, Linux. Obviously, very, very powerful, but you have to have a little bit more knowledge. Uh, it has much more flexibility, so there's, and, it's just those two camps. And I think when it comes to, like, nuts and bolts stuff, like VLC, you know, like VLC wouldn't exist if there wasn't open source. Oh my it's God, the most yes. incredible It's 100%, thing. I believe, drivers are all open source. That's right. Yeah. And it's and it just... And will, really, really good. We'll play anything. And, that's why, it. and yeah. that's why I think we're so lucky that we have open source, and that's something yeah, that that's... concept. Yeah. And the product of the internet, because it's like, you know, collectively... It will. Very it's, powerful. It, it is. It's almost evolution. It's almost like natural selection. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Uh, by that time, there were already two variations of the cart in the wild. Some customers had a one megabyte flash version. Others have five twelve. So to keep things simple, I created a format that would reserve sixty four k 
for the firmware, booting, menu system, etc., and limit the games to 448 kilobytes, which is massive. Uh, so they would work on all variations. Um, if a game were to be a cart release only, it could be the full 1 meg, because he would be able to choose that variation of the chip to load his game on. The extra space was a huge benefit, moving from the Harmony to the Uno cart. Uh, Wushu Masters is already over 70 kilobytes just from the graphics and some simple game logic, and you'll see why it's 70 kilobytes when we get to it. Uh, um, Gorilla Force, is that it? Gorilla Force will probably be even bigger since it's going to have large scrollable levels and boss fights eventually. Um, and you'll see very soon what game this is a playoff of, uh, Gorilla Force, and people will be very excited. <laughs> cool. Um, because I there has never been a game on the 2600 like this before that Ooh. I can think of. Uh, the Uno Kart's ecosystem is similar to DPC Plus and CDF. There is the firmware which handles the booting and the menu system to load the game from SD card. There is a shared driver library that handles interactions with the Atari. So they make it very simple to be able to talk to the hardware of the Atari. Then there is the game which is built on top of the driver. How this is implemented is significantly different. The UNO firmware was enhanced to support the, an ACE file format, which specifies a chunk of ARM code to copy to flash memory and execute. The ability to update firmware from the SD card is actually just a special ACE file that contains a program to rewrite the flash memory. And it's really easy to update the flash. You just click on the, on the software and your flash is updated. I, I, I believe that's exactly the same as the Harmony. They make it very simple. Um, and it's stored as, uh, with the new hardware version. This is my GitHub fork and available for anyone to download and build. Oh, so he does make wow. it available. That's really nice. Yes. Um, so let's get into Gorilla Force because okay, I've delayed cool. it long enough. Blah, blah, blah. Most people are not interested in this. So this is our custom menu for uh, today with Gorilla Force, <laughs> Just don't update Masters, it the day before Ro Robot Z, and he was working on an update an hour before we went to air. This version it was made this morning. <laughs> Whoa! It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, fifty-five minutes into the show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's it's the first show back for a while. Hi. Yeah, we got some here. cats. So let's man. load up Gorilla Force for sure. And um, so this is, I think, their company name. Okay, cool. Strong Arm. And here's the title screen, Gorilla Force. And it's actually a gorilla. I love it. And there's banana and force. Gorilla spelled gorilla rather than gorilla, as in uh, like freedom fighters. That's or, right. Depending on your point of view of <laughs> If the guerrilla fighters, I, I, are I know I've good. already said this on the show, but I remember like in social studies when we talked about guerrilla warfare, I just imagined <laughs> gorillas, gorillas just with like machine guns. Well, yeah, because they talked about that's the Vietnam War, and I'm like, man, like gorillas, that's crazy. And I brought it up at one point in like a family party with someone mentioned Vietnam, and I was like, man, it's it's like must have been wild, like fighting monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was, everyone was like, oh, everyone, everyone was don't like, call them that. That's was, so racist. And I was trying, I was like, no, but they're like gorilla warfare they're like fighting apes and people were like oh Erlen. Oh, so i love it it brings me back to like my <laughs> this embarrassing moment this great moment it's so, like oh we gotta correct that we got a teaching moment okay so let's 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 whoa holy shit so i'm sh so you're a gorilla and there you go dude i'm just constantly shooting <laughs> yes and i can aim okay cool so i can kind of jump and, and obviously the constant shooting is because you need the button for jump. Yeah, it makes sense. Or actually, I don't think. Whoa! There's... Okay, I just. Oh, thanks, Cap. I just died. Yeah. Okay. So press up. I can like okay, shoot, can shoot up or right. I can shoot down. So up isn't jump. The jump is the button. Cool. So like, what was interesting is I okay I died <laughs> again in the same spot, but it's hard to like tell. Okay, hold on. Okay, there this is go. where I. Okay. Death. Yep. And Luri got it. Luri Fedorek. Wow, Contra with a gorilla. Have you ever yeah, played Contra? Dude. I have I have played Contra. That's exactly what I was thinking. Contra is a very classic oh, NES oh, game. Okay. And it's beloved. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take this. So if if I am correct, this is the first Contra style game. Because scrolling like that is very difficult on the twenty six hundred. 
and it, this one has very, very this, nice, sc smooth scrolling. Absolutely. And, and who, it's do, 3D. who doesn't want to shoot people with it's, it's, a gorilla? That's right. And it's kind of got that perspective, like this, not completely flat. You can see the grass. Okay. It's got different colors for different depths and heights. I keep dying, man. Yeah, it is obviously not complete. Yeah, it's These are just... both very early works in progress. Um, because you see, like, the, the, it's weird stuff. Do you see what I mean? Like, You have to land on the top of the green. Or, or part of the green. Death. And you can fall down. Like, you don't have to jump. But you do have to jump up. But you can fall down. Just try falling. Okay, if I falling to the right. But there. It... See? You can do that. But oh, you can't see. do that. You have to jump yeah, up. Yeah, I gotta jump up. I see. So there's see. like a 3D perspective. That makes complete sense. So okay. The taller things are more in the back, let's say. And the things in the front are Yes, yeah, so you can fall below down you. but not up. Yeah. And that's okay. that's how it is on Contra as well. That makes sense. And this is not bus stuffing. Uh, Splendid Nut is asking. Bus stuff color playfield color update. So this is not bus stuffing this is just using the co-processor arm chip no so we do have zach no okay in the chat wow um so he can answer any very detailed questions that uh, other developers want uh, answered um hold the button he says there higher jumps oh holy <laughs> shit man okay changed your life you literally are gonna change my life that's so much easier okay so i'm going to read some more out uh, there is also the strong arm for v for VCS project. Okay, I'm gonna get way farther with the developers notes. Who would have thought the guy who made it has knows how to play it? <laughs> uh, this is an all new framework that I'm building to allow advanced arm based Atari games. So he is developing a programming environment for people to um, to people to develop games, and that's where the boss would be. Hey man! So now you can also go backwards. Whoa! Whoa. So you're not stuck going forwards like early Super Mario. You can keep going. Oh, see, look, so we hold... can diagonal it. Okay. So you can shoot in all directions except down. Now, I don't understand why he didn't program down, but I'm hoping he will, because if you duck, you sh you might should be able to shoot down, maybe, and shoot down at an angle, too. He yeah. may have a good reason for that well, you now, can kind but it's just of, not implemented yet. You can kind of actually cheat it. Like, um, hold well, you'll on. You'll be able to shoot straight down. Like I had it, I had, see, I accidentally, you have to kind of. Down is to come. Yes. There you go. So you see, you see how I got, a, I got oh, one. Oh, I saw one. But oh. like, you have to kind of like, like rotate it almost like. <laughs> As it's going. See, there we go. Try and do it to the right. Yeah. There, that's you can more get visible. One, one you, off. You can get like one little dinky one that sort of fires <laughs> off. This is very cool, man. You can shoot down while jumping. Oh, Dude. there you go. And I got the big jump now Try and do now, a jump too. in diagonal. Can you do a, a diagonal shooting? No. Oh, you, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it kind of takes a minute, though. So he's going to make it easier to do that. Wow. Um, this framework is also open source, but it is still work in progress and requires a bit of learning curve to get the dev environment working. Strong Arm takes a completely different approach to using the ARM chip as a coprocessor. There's a small 6502 program that fits in Riot RAM. Uh, oh, wow. The program handles updating audio registers and sending V-Sync sig signals during overscan and V-Blank periods. Hmm. During that time, the ARM MCU can focus on running game logic without needing to stay in sync with the Atari. Oh, wow. wow. So you don't have to jump... You don't have to be talking with the Atari... There's a 6502 that does it internally? Oh, that's interesting. It appears as though I've been awarded a medal of honor. <laughs> yeah, you've got bananas. I guess that's lives, points. I'm not I'm sure yet. I wonder what we may, we'll get to that. I wonder what my... Uh, at the end of the V-blank, execution jumps back into the fake ROM, and the arm takes control no. of everything. So this is all above my pay grade. All, all the display kernels are written in C++. The strong arm framework keeps track of where the ROM is in the 6507. We'll be reading from and dynamically generates the ROM on the fly. Whoa. Okay. That's very interesting. Numbers to come in the status bar. Um, how is the controls? Very pretty, smooth, pretty man. Once it takes out me the... a minute or two. The big jump makes a huge difference for this game. I also oh, think yeah, that, yeah. like... 
the thing that kind of kind of messed me up at first was just trying to figure out the rules of these platforms right. because sometimes you sort of fall sometimes I mean, yeah, have you played contra um i have played contra oh, okay. but um um try and go back all the way to the beginning sure. backwards i can do it but you see it's like harder because no, i can't. You can't you can't jump up that high oh no um okay this makes it possible to have a single c plus plus kernel which would otherwise require 10 to hundreds of 6507 assembly display kernels oh wow that is very different um because uh programming on the harmony cart you would have to essentially have two programs one um program for the 6507 um done in assembly or batari basic and then one it programmed in C++ for the ARM, and he's saying you can do it completely in one program for the, in C++ and still do calls to the 6507. What happened? Wow, it's a button. Yeah. I'm, yeah, try I'm trying to see if I can, like... Duck! Duck, shoot him! Duck! I'm trying to see what happens if I, like, oh, run no into collision. them. There's okay, no collision. No collision yet. Yet. Uh, since the decision is made by the ARM processor in time between the 6507, it cycles it doesn't count against the 76 cycles per scanline budget and allows more complex kernels oh my god so if you program the timing right for the 6507 instructions you can have incredibly complex programs i thought native english speaking said 6502 didn't i not say that 6507 yeah i said 6507 6502. Wow, that's... See, I understand that. Because you, for some of the program for on the Harmony card, you had to jump back into executing the code directly on the 6507, which is really, 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 really slow compared to the ARM. But on the UNO card, you can execute all the code on the processor on the UNO, which is, like, massively faster. Wow, so... Wow, that's really going to be amazing. Uh, one huge benefit to this approach is that only a few simple 6507 instructions need to be dynamically simulated. Okay, so the strong, or maybe they are the same number of uh, instruction cycles no. to take? I don't know. So the strong arm framework tracks what the next expected address is and pulls for that. It also has corresponding data value ready to go, and as soon as it, it sees the expected address, it can output the data value and go back to running a little bit of ARM code before it's time to look, look for the next address. This makes it more tolerant of systems with funky bus timings. There we go. There we go. So he has in mind possibly solved the bus stuffing issue um, and will be able to make it work on the Atari Junior and 7800. So this is really, really exciting for developers. Like, unbelievably exciting. So I mean, I this guess opens up a whole world of new generation of Atari 2600 games with way more complex graphics and backgrounds and sound. And it all starts in the jungle. <laughs> and it all starts in the jungle with a gorilla. We're in the middle. <laughs> and That's how bananas. it goes, man. You gotta go out to the to the to the unknown. Is this right up some posted somewhere? Thrust asks. No. So you'll have to transcribe my words. No, um I'm sure um I'm sure Zach will be able to fill you in. Uh, thanks, Zach. Others have been figuring figuring out banging that volume register for multi channel sound. I just entered note data and wave short waveform shaped at and i suppose is the sound guy yeah dude. so he's gonna be really interested in what this opens up for sound and the possibilities of more complex um uh samples well that would Sampled be sound. that would really transform um the immersive potential of oh, a game yeah. i i think that sound is is almost more than 50 percent um, and when it yes. comes to immersion for sure oh yeah try playing your favorite games with the sound off your timing will be off you won't be alerted to dangers like it tells you when you're low on bullets it's also so interesting that the aesthetic of these kinds of games is really what brings you immediately there is the sound yes There's something about the sampling of like uh Atari, NES, Genesis, any of these older games, like you immediately can almost tell what console it is by the sound that oh, comes from yeah, it. Yeah. To be so we play chiptune before we go on the air, and it's so distinctive. 
this the sound and it and it has a nostalgic factor but it also even for people who don't have any association with it it's it's so unique the the, the um manually created sounds um through digital digital means and it's hilarious because like i i don't know if uh when it was mentioned but like it was ne the sounds from an Atari were never designed to be musical, so oh, like you no. have to really tweak it to make it feel like yeah, uh, they're just divided randomly into um, uh, different frequencies that do not correspond. They they happen to kind of correspond on some notes, but mostly. But not. that's the hilarious thing is that engineers end up designing often the the first step and then it's developers and artists and people come in and kind of take the engineer stuff so it's so wild the sound in the atari is such obviously such an engineering <laughs> it decision it's like oh we we're gonna will... just divide this by 128 and there's your frequencies exactly and Good then luck. you have to reverse engineer all that stuff it's yeah. so crazy i wonder it would be really crazy to play like a game which just samples completely different stuff especially for um uh working with um uh like ports mm. So, uh, I have one, he says, I have one of the crappiest 2600 juniors and strong arm runs on it without any problem. So he is, he says he has solved the bus stuffing issue right here that people have been working on for literally decades. Shit, man. <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, other programs do not do so well on that system. Uh, in Wushu Masters, the background scrolling is calculated during the time. Should we pop over to Wushu? Yes, we probably just because. Well, it's a two-player game. I guess so. Okay. I want to. I want to get through this because this because we got some. It's stuff. really, really groundbreaking. Cool, cool. So keep going. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's the oh, same level just, over and over again. <laughs> that's all good, man. I'm just. Other, I'm in the jungle. Um, the Wushu Master's background scrolling is calculated during the time where the screen screen is being drawn, so the over blank V blank time is available to do more game logic and graphics processing. Stella supports DPC Plus and CDF by emulating both the Atari and the ARM chip in the Harmony Cart. Unfortunately, the open source, source ARM code it uses doesn't support the newer ARM chip in the Uno, but I have some news on that. So it may take some considerable effort before strong ARM on Uno can be emulated in Stella. For development purposes, that is not an issue because Stella is open source. So that's very, very good. I simply modified Stella to provide the same interface as the low-level strong arm driver and then built the game as part of the Stella Windows executable. Okay, so he has also <laughs> modified Stella so his games can run in it. That's unbelievable. So you need to get in touch with Stephen hey. A. No. Dude, he's eating a VGA cable. Well, <laughs> composite. Today's RCA. Yeah. RCA, sorry. Uh, oh, bad cat. Right now, the cats and your Atari are... Yeah, but luckily, it just broke off the glue, so Good. I'll be able to glue it back. Yeah, you're totally fine. But he did step on it, that's for sure. Um, this works really well because it allows me to write the game as if it's a visual C++ project. All the visual studio awesomeness that you would have for a, vi a Windows C++ program is available for developing the game. I can set breakpoints, step through the code inspect and modify variables you get full source level debugging and tell intellisense with auto completion then to test on actual hardware i build the project with a tolic studio the stm 32f tool chain it outputs the bin file for me to copy to the sd card and load on the uno testing on real hardware is important when developing display kernels because it can take if it takes too much time between the 6507 cycles the two processors get out of sync and the game will crash once the display kernels are stable, the rest of the work requires very little hardware testing. Unfortunately for me, this is a new process and there are a few kinks to work out. This weekend I discovered that some variables get set to zero in Visual Studio and are left uninitialized in the Uno cart. Of course, this is a bug on my part for not explicitly initializing them in the first place, which, but since I hadn't run into this before and the symptom was a crash, it took a while to um, track down that issue. Yeah, a big thing is to initialize um, everything to zero because the Atari can randomly put information in um, different spots uh, in the memory and if you don't set that to zero or whatever you want to set it to it, it'll use it and it'll be like it'll turn out crazy uh, <clears throat> 
Zach says, solving the bus stuffing issue was a group effort. It definitely wasn't just me that accomplished it. Well, that, that's, that's, yeah, I mean, everything takes, takes effort from the community. It takes a village. It does. Uh, I also found out the current firmware fails to properly load games larger than 48K. This is why I haven't sent you the Wushu Masters build yet. Uh, first, I need to send you the firmware update so it can handle the 72K game, and which hence why we have a proprietary build of all three games in one package loaded onto the flash memory of the Uno cart. Um, so that's why we have that menu. I also write some utility programs in C, C, uh, C Sharp, which takes the image files from JSON and converts them into C++ files uh, to be included in the game. If he sends me a new fighter, I just drop... Okay, so let's... I'm going to skip ahead to Gorilla Force. Cool. It has uh, is 25% complete. Wushu Masters 50% complete. Eventually, I'd like to include the following features in Gorilla Force. Animated backgrounds. So maybe some clouds. Makes sense. The water's moving. Uh, bananas and other collectible items dropped by enemies. Hell yeah. So those guys are hoarding all the bananas. And the, guy want, the gorilla wants them back. This is just my life they're describing. <laughs> Mini boss battle at the end of each level. So you've made it to the end. And so you'd have to fight somebody. Makes sense. Uh, vertical s vertical scrolling. Very cool. So the play field. I mean, Contra has a vertical scrolling level. Um, a gorilla hanging from the helicopter. So he'll be helicoptered in. Yes. I bet. That's awesome. Dude, I'm into that. There'll be some drones. Uh, secret areas. Uh, different weapons distinguished by bullet patterns. Ooh, spread fire. Makes sense. Makes Enemies return sense. fire. Obviously, they're just standing there in the middle of the screen. Enemies. Not even on a platform. Um, they not, don't move. Not doing this. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and save points, which is awesome. That's badass. Because I love if you're going to make a huge game, which he's planning on. You absolutely need save points yeah. or else. It's it's um, modern sensibilities you have to inject into these games. Like going back to the Atari or NES era where there's no save points are just going to frustrate people. I think. Yeah, it's definitely something that we we kind of need unfortunately so lots of great discussion going on that is above my head in the chat Dude, all this is above my head i'm just playing the monkey who shoots people so we're gonna get into the second game now so we're gonna switch away from you even though you're still playing that's okay and we're gonna get into wushu masters now let's uh, switch over let's do it uh, sorry, sorry. Wushu. Okay. Okay. Wushu Masters. So there's the title screen. That's cool. I like this title. Yeah, it's got the gold and the red. Very um, Asian colors. Absolutely. Very appropriate. Okay, so I'm actually going to have to uh, plug in a joystick. So I'm going to turn it off for a second. Hold on. These names are great. <laughs> Abdul. Um, Nazi? No. <laughs> Tex. Tex. One second. There we go. Cool. So, Wushu Masters. Ooh. So this one does use bus stuffing. Okay. And it's being played on a uh, RGB modded light sixer. Um, so those don't have any problems with bus stuffing at the moment, but he has also said he has solved a lot of the bus stuffing issues. Wow. Um, so if you load it up, this is a one-on-one -on -one fighter game. He has posted early screenshots of this. So this is the title screen. So um, the way you select... It's just moving. Left changes the left guy. So let's go through it. Oh. Yang. Tex, X, which is cowboy. X guy. Is <laughs> just a guy is named X, doesn't have a name. Abdul. Uh, Yang. Yang. So there's four? Tex. X. Yeah. So there's four. And pressing right changes the, changes guy, the this second guy. player. Which one do you want to be? Um, I can be Tex. Cool. Do you want to be Abdul? I'm going to be Abdul. Okay. Now, up and down changes the where you are 
Whoa! So so this is uh, 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 cherry blossoms. Uh, but reflections in the water. This is Whoa, like oh, look at this cherry blossoms. This is where dead you... tree. This is very much like uh, Mad Max. Yeah, this is where Tex <laughs> hangs out. It's a city. Ooh, wow! Big, this is cool, city. man. This is uh, the dojo, which Abdul blends into the background. Oh, yeah, that's right. Abdul. Mm, this is Ab might need to be a Ab Ab color change. Abdul becomes a ninja in oh, this he has place. A, yeah, he has an advantage in this. This is where Yang. There you go. Or an X. Okay. Okay, what else? A cave. Oh, dungeon with a huge skeleton. Yeah. Of a, a giant Holy hanging shit. on the wall. I don't know where what this is. Those a port? Massive gravestones? No, I think a this buildings is, I, in the distance. I, that feels like water in these yeah. seem like ports, and then this is um uh, this like is a, a, a big, big trouble in big little China. Is yeah, what this is. a big hall with a chair. Oh, and then another kind of There's open, how many are open these, arena. These design is crazy, and then now we're like back on. So the a lot of backgrounds palm. and very very complex. Um, what looks like. This this feels double, like double like a line. clean one to play, you know, because it's like a beautiful one. Like yeah. this is that, uh, let's like play this the is cherry blossom. Sure, this is really beautiful, but it's it's we're a not lot. on the ground. Yeah, that one seems like you're on the ground. Let's... Oh, his name's X because he doesn't wear pants. <laughs> He's supposed to says or theorizes. So let me read off be, what is. I gotta is. be pantsless, Mr. X. So Wushu Master uh, says it's fifty percent done. Uh, so fighter specific hitboxes need to be done. Damage varied on base uh, based on attack and what was hit. There need, he's going to put AI uh, for a CPU player. Uh, Non-human characters, so he's going to add more characters. Ooh. Unlockable arenas and fighters. Uh, Multi-round fights, so it's just a single round right now. Uh, selection screens for fighters and arenas, which he has put in. So this must be a little bit old. Um, improved bus stuffing so that does failure detection and correction that was found to be necessary on a few systems. Uh, this must be done before I release a playable demo of Wushu Master. Okay. Yeah, this is a nice one. This yeah, it's very probably... clean, very bright colors. It's also very clear where the ground is, the reflection yeah. and everything. And the characters are very good too. Very, very nice. And there's no flicker whatsoever. Oh, it's insane. Should I hit just go and see what yeah. happens? Yeah, so press the button. So, it looks like a lot of test. Oh no! Oh no! Fail. I was Simon. doing so well. That's really funny because I had played this a lot, or maybe I played an earlier version of it. Okay, let's go back. Set it up are. again. Um, do, 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 do. Both okay. games were designed to be flicker-free. I feel this is vital. Uh, if you're going to have such colorful backgrounds scrolling by. This is especially challenging to accomplish. <laughs> Don't your... jump left when you're walking right. <laughs> I'm sorry I immediately, like, <laughs> the first thing I do is Crash. bug the game. That's, that's so funny. That's how, that's how, that's why I'm here. I'm like, you want to find a bug? <laughs> he'll, he'll find I'll it. I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll immediately. If you could look closely, you can see that the play field actually scrolls behind the status bar. Oh, we're not on a play field that does have <laughs> doesn't go up to the status bar maybe uh, choose a different background that goes right to the ceiling uh, no keep going keep going that one yeah even though it's a little complex cool uh we spent weeks figuring out how to make it look like that and actually get it working uh wushu masters has the ability to scroll the play field in all directions whoa you can do this in multiple regions of the screen at the same time. Eventually, this should allow for some interesting split-screen bonus levels that have parallax effects as well. Jeez. Jesus. Oh, my God. Um, it's the year 2020. The Atari 2600. Yes. Parallaxes. <laughs> is full effect. Um, this uh, Sprites in Wushu Masters are drawn by setting the graphic, color, new size, and H move registers every scan line. You can see that the head is a single pixel. Really? How? There's dot. There's parts missing. Oh my god! And the body is a double or quad width pixels. And because you can only move the graphic left or right by seven or eight pixels each scan line, the tool has to figure out which graphics to use in order to keep the gaps to seven pixels or less. Wow. 
Uh, then the mirror image has to be calculated too because now the gaps are based on the other side of the sprite. It's a huge pain to draw them this way and we're constantly having to fix up the source images because the limitation of the TIA was violated. So there we go. That's the initial... So let's play it and no jumping to the left while moving to the right. Tough thing is, is that's a, definitely a tactic though. It know? is. Because if I'm jumping around trying to like dodge <laughs> your attacks... Um... I have noticed in the in the short game playing uh, before the show, this is in hyper mode. Yeah. <laughs> what is the Street Fighter Two Turbo Edition? Right. This is like holy double Turbo Edition. Okay, should we? I don't think there's any damage though. Oh no! So it's just moves. That's hilarious. But I mean, look, look at this game, and and look how fast they're moving and how smooth the the. Well, movement. yeah, man, and also, like, the scrolling through the different things, you know, like, we got, like, this. We're both moving, the background is moving and adjusting based where we are. The background's scrolling in behind the status bar. Ooh, look, I can block. Ooh, ooh, oh, I'm using my so force energy on you! Oh. Ooh, oh. And, and, like, nothing is flickering. It's super fast movement. That's a hell of a workout if you ever do that, <laughs> man. That's, that, that's what it'll... <laughs> And if, if I stay still and you move and you scroll the background, it stays steady as much as you can within the four pixel. Like, I am moving with the background just fine. <clears throat> so, unbelievable achievement. So, let... Uh, Zach says, they will be slowed down in the next demo. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> That's it's crazy. So, let's go through the moves here. Oh, uh, my God, there's a whole diagram. There's a lot of moves. So, standing... It's no button, like nothing's happening. Uh, uh, jump up, no button and up. So just up. So it moves you a little bit forward when you're jumping up. Or back. Are you doing know. sideways a little bit? Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. If you move backwards and jump, it jumps backwards. You're at the edge of the screen. Okay. If the last move you did was forwards... It jumps forwards. Oh yeah, but if I right? move back, and it then goes back. Like... That's really cool. That's nice. Uh, jump up, and left or right, jumps. A left big jump. Right. Yep. Left or right and no button moves you left and right. Right. Yep. Um, down, is squat and do down into the angle. Oh, I it's can't. just all the same. Just... Down and angles are are squat. Uh, jump up with the button is a kick. Maybe hold down the button first. And then up. It's too fast. <laughs> I think, see if I do almost oh, diagonal, right? Yeah, that one's a bit tricky. With this one. Let me do it on here. No, it still jumps. So those aren't quite right. But but see, like, if I do diagonal, that's for sure. Yeah, kick. that's for sure a kick. So this is not quite right. Jump left, up, up into the left, up into the right with the jump. Is jump up left, right? Oh, we already had that one. Um, uh, a high block is back with the button. Yeah. It's a high block. Uh, down with the button is an uppercut. Down with the button? Oh, yeah, that's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's really fast, and over and over again. It probably should just be once, right? Um, forward with the button is a spinning kick, which is oh, so Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what I was doing. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Because like, I was like, oh, that's more like forward and... Jump up and broken is up is broken at the moment. He says. Oh, that's okay. A a low kick, uh, is forward down with the button. There you go. Ah, Sweeping yeah. kick. Oh yeah, yeah. Got to have that. Uh, a low block is back and down with the button. Ooh. Oh, so blocks the kicks, the low kicks, and a no direction with just the button is punch. I is think. a punch. It doesn't say punch, but that is it. Okay. Take that, Tex. <laughs> okay, so that is, I think, everything that he sent. And I have a note from um, information from Mayday as well. Oh. And so this is both their first games. That's crazy. That they ever made. They've done little things here and there, but not full games yet. Um, Zach gave a great background on these projects, but I thought I would add some more from my perspective. As he said, I both posted some very ambitious mock-ups. It wasn't the first time I'd done that, but usually such postings are just ignored. 
Uh, Zach not only took the idea, but immediately posted a screenshot showing it in action and saying what didn't work. Like these are these are really complex backgrounds. These are probably one of the most complex backgrounds ever seen in a game. Actually, you want to change the backgrounds? Yeah, yeah. So we can see more of the scrolling because they're they're wide. Do I have to? Yeah, I, think I have to reset. You got to just turn the whole thing off. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's check out some more of the backgrounds. Yeah, let's check out that one. Should we just hit play? Yep, just hit play and then start scrolling. So you can see the whole tree and the mountains. Wow. Um, I've, I've taken some time over the years to try and learn the constraints, and I've learned even more by working with Zach. I've started out trying to program a rudimentary dodgeball game using a previously, previously posted kernel. A dodgeball game would be amazing. I finally got a three-on-three -three display working with both missiles and the ball showing up on the screen. Even that required a lot of help from the community. And going through all of Andrew Davies' tutorials, I wish he'd kept going, but I think that uh, was more for people with programming experience instead of complete noobs. From there, I thought an RPG would make a great game. Again, overly ambitious at the time. Eventually partnered with a program who liked my ideas. Did you jump backwards? I didn't, I didn't. Not on purpose. Anyway, I, no, I didn't do it. I was, I was just pushing up. Oh. <laughs> Uh, he immediately announced the game, though I told him to wait. He kind of rubbed the community the wrong way. After a while working on it and only seeing screenshots, neither of us were happy with the direction and eventually fell apart. I also learned a lot along the way. Fast forward to a, a decade <laughs> to the MK mock-ups. Zach and I were going back and forth quickly via PM, and it was just much better partnership. He had an idea, he had an idea guy that willingly accept feedbacks feedback and he was willing to work through my demands <laughs> for example i'm quite sure he was tired of messing around with the status bar <laughs> but he kept at it until it looked much better the status bar looks gorgeous it's got a little curve Hell at the yeah, bottom man. Also, it's got outlined in yellow and yellow in the middle like and, and it's got a background color and thrust and it's actually got red on the right hand side to make it 3d hell yeah man oh my god and thrust is right the parallaxing for the mountain would do would a be, lot like if you oh, get the mountain yeah, in the same spot fairly steady or move it just a little bit and then the tree moves like a lot yeah i mean that's very complex to have the tree move over the mountain and yeah. you'd have to do an addition of two different uh, play play areas play backgrounds but totally doable i think he's probably got enough time on the arm arm chip to do that uh it's kind of dedication from his end that will make these games something unique to the community and that's really what you have to have is longevity and dedication to make these things happen Absolutely. because it takes so long and a lot of people just give up because it's too hard or it's just taking too long and there's not that instant gratification and i can't remember who's i think uh dan kitchen said it's like the last 10 percent is the hardest and most people that's where they stop yeah it you don't see anything appreciably different in the game but it's those little changes it's the playability of it, it's the tweaking Absolutely. that really make the game go from good to amazing it's the case with everything man that last 10 yeah. percent is the oh, hardest it is because i think slog. also you've gotten the most out of it i did this thing called the grouse grind which is <laughs> like this really brutal like like mountain that you climb and man, I made it three quarters of the way up, and I was like, I'm done. And you have to go down, too. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. And it was like, <laughs> and, and it is what they say, like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Like, I yeah. definitely reached that point. I felt exactly what he's describing, yeah. which is like, when you're three quarters of the way through something, you've gotten everything out of it that you want. Yes. And then, yeah. and so that last bit is... It's for other people. Or it's for almost, it's just finishing it. Because, yeah. you know, like... Splendid Nut says the chaotic grill is in the last ten percent. Yeah, it's those. It's the playability tweaks. Like yeah, that's man. that's the Burger Time uh, port. No, it's not a port, but it's a it's an homage <laughs> to it. Yeah. Um, and it is really, really, really good where it is right now. But it's all these little tiny playability Hell tweaks yeah, man. And, and and hunting down these bugs and everything. I've been like oh, in the stacks too, which we definitely. I want to do that one, man. That's a cool in one. In the 12-hour. Hell yeah. And we got to... Oh, my God. It's going to be so hard to finish that game. It's such a hard... I don't know if we'll finish it, but we'll definitely we'll play, it again. play it. Yeah, I'll put that on the list. Um, yeah. We just seem to work well together because we're not worried about feelings, just trying to make something the best we can. We eventually decided to turn MK into an original game instead of putting in a brand, bunch of work simply to get a cease and desist. 
Yeah, and that's always a concern too. I mean, there's the the high profile um, recognition you get from doing a port, but then there's like, hey, you worked on this game, it's got to go away. Yeah, and man. If you continue putting this out or say anything more about this it. This is no signal? Is that us or is that. Oh, that's us. Somebody alert us. Hot camera. Oh, no. Oh, I caught it like somehow. Immediately? Oh, the screen is an still hear us we're doing yeah, a radio we're still, show now we're still alive <laughs> don't worry about it this is the zero page podcast that's right welcome to the zero page podcast sponsored by what are we sponsored by uno card, <laughs> uno card today yeah. we're sponsored by the uno card no no we're not definitely not we don't want to we don't want to endorse one thing over the other no we, they both we have, have their own we have no, we have no endorsements. No, we're not getting paid. No sponsors. I had to pay for both of these carts. <laughs> I, dude, I suppose you're absolutely right. This dark palm tree against the colorful sunset. Oh. Like the thing that's so nice is you've really done a great job designing all these different oh, backgrounds, man. Like um. Let's look at another one. Like if we. Well, I finish this off. Like like this is. It's also just great plays with color like look at this gradient like oh. that's very beautiful this kind of yeah. starting from yellow to pink to blue it's gorgeous. it looks like it's a two two line background obviously a single line background and then as so i said big trouble room. little china which oh is yeah. so cool to see and then this one's like i think this is the, i call this the port one could be great it could be graveyard i wonder if messing with our sync might allow new tricks like smooth play field scrolling oh my god the first person to figure out play field scrolling because they are four pixels wide, the play fields. You can only yeah. chunk it in four pixels. The first person to figure that out is going to open up another world, like unbelievable games from the 2600. But we'll have to wait for that. Uh, I'm sure there's been experiments. I think I did see one, but it was just like a demo. It was like just trying to make it work. And I think they did. But how, how to make that work in a game is a whole different thing. Uh, there are several other people in a, uh, at Atari Age who have been extremely helpful over the years. Andrew Davey, for writing his tutorial forever ago. Spiceware, obviously, he has a great tutorial as well. Um, Zach, both answer, and he's very, Spiceware is so good at answering. Daryl Spice shadow. Jr., <laughs> for answering questions of people uh, programming. Uh, Zach, both answering a lot of questions in the forum, trying to actively help those seeking knowledge. V Dub Bobby for giving me a lot of help when I was working on my own stuff, even though I don't think he's active anymore. I don't, I haven't seen him post anything in the forums. Uh, Ishu was aware of my RPG fiasco and really helped me appreciate my experience with that a lot more. He has some really incredible stuff. I hope to finish. He's able to finish someday. To close, I just, I'll just say I really appreciate working with Zach, and can't wait to finish up these games, and hopefully more after that. What he has been able to get done in a short amount of time has been phenomenal, and I couldn't ask for a better partner. Hope you enjoy the work in progress. Cool. Both these games are so exciting. There's so much potential here, man. It's well, crazy. Just what they've shown here is no other games have done before. <laughs> and once they f like figure out the speed and the timing and the collisions, and you know they've got the basics down. Especially in this, this is this is really close to being done. They just yeah, need to man. have hit detection and slow slow down the rapid punches and kicks. It's unbelievable. I suppose it says uh, see my YouTube. I suppose for smooth playfield scrolling. So there we go. Wow, they have done that. It only worked on some older CRTs. So using tricks, some very wow. very clever tricks. So let's um, get on to the next the game. The Zed one. Yeah, the robot Zed. Cool. Let's do it. I can. Do you want me to hit? Yeah, if you can turn it off and on again. And I'll uh, get this going. And uh, then I'll go into... Um, don't say anything about this yet. It's not on the screen. <laughs> I'll go into a little bit about... Um, ooh, uh, the differences between the different... Um, the Harmony cart and the Uno cart uh, while you play this because there's a lot to play. Okay, in cool. this demo, um, so you'll have a lot of time, <laughs> or I'll have a lot of time. Okay, so. sweet. Let's. Tr so 
Let's take a look at this title screen. Don't press the button yet. <laughs> I'm, one, I'm just so, so this is a robot. I Zed just ran demo. around as a monkey on one level, and then I ran around. I just, I just so you're ready for. A, I just want to play a game that you can kill actual things. <laughs> well, I can do something, and I, I I was fighting against myself, and I couldn't even hit myself. <laughs> so this uh, is Robot Zed. Uh, this has been in the works for a couple years. This is made by Chris Spry, aka uh, Sprybug. You can download this. It's in the Atari oh, okay, forums. Cool. Um, so let me get to the notes on that. Uh, so this, uh, the, it was first posted, uh, December 7th, 2017, uh, began programming 2014. Um, this build is from June 9th, 2019. It is a 64 K game. So I believe you do have to have Harmony Encore okay, cool. to play it on cart, but you can use, play it using Stella. Um, you have to have Harmony Encore or Uno cart. This is not... I don't believe it's... No, you can play it on the Harmony Encore. Um, uh, or the Uno cart, because it has more um, more ROM, more RAM, to be able to load it. Um, the first public mention of it uh, was in November 8th, 2015. Uh, it is made in Batari Basic, just like his other two programs, Princess Rescue and Zippy the Porcupine, which were super high-profile games. For obvious reasons, they were <laughs> ports of uh, Mario, Super Mario Brothers, and um, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog. Man, yeah. um, Princess Rescue got a cease and desist and disappeared. Now it's really? very expensive. It's like two hundred dollars US to buy it. Was it a I cartridge? Would, yep, full box, full cartridge, sold in the store. Rough man. Um, I'm sorry about that. That sucks. We did play that game on the stream. I finished it. It's amazing. Oh, it's, it's a too really bad, good then. game. And we played Zippy the Porcupine. Yeah, that was... And that's... I mean, it's not our forte. I'm not very, good at it. It's a very challenging platformer. Very ch so if you're good at... Um, what made that platformer challenging is when you jumped, you couldn't adjust. And that was really difficult. Right. Because I think... Like, that's what it was. We're so used to being able to kind of guide. Like, you know, you think about like Night Guy in Low Res World. Like, you can... Yeah, you guide can, yourself a bit. Totally. But you would kind of have... So it was almost more of a game of like timing. Like, you'd have to hit exactly the right point, And if yeah. you failed... There was no... Yeah, Nintendo's very, very protective of their IP. And that is their... I mean... I mean, they have to protect their IP. It's 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 built into... Um, it's... Uh, intellectual property. <laughs> that if you do not defend it, you are saying something by not um, going after the person. Like, that's how it works. It almost allows other people to do it. I mean, it, it kind of sucks. But that Mario is like a billion dollar icon. Like that, they've, it's, their, it's their money. It's kind it's of their... almost to the point that I think it's a little on the pathetic side. Like <laughs> that they've just milked this thing for like how Every game many is amazing. years. You know, they keep you putting know? out amazing it's, uh, Mario games. And like, so. I, I'm, I'm, but it's just, it's just crazy because it's like that icon has like, who would have thought that basically just like <laughs> that guy <laughs> would become the most iconic video game. Yeah, the guy that you know is the the evil guy, a plumber who's like taking mushrooms and tripping <laughs> balls while he's going into oh, sewers. Like it's so crazy how psychedelic that game is. And then you know, and nowadays it's it's like you know Mario Party, Mario it's everything. It's just like it's crazy. It makes sense because it's like that is that's their icon so i said uh in november so earlier this year i decided to embark on my new game called robot zed or z actually it's spelled zed he must be not you in from Ooh. the u.s because it's z-e-d that's right uh the first level is about two-fifths of the way finished that's not this is old information once i finish the introductory tutorial level i'll post it here as the demo game for you guys to try the game is like a mix of Mega Man and kirby with some new game mechanics cool. that you'll start to see with indie developers that you're starting to see with indie developers it uses an upgraded version of my princess rescue engine uh oh, this up that's so cool this, yeah so you're able to reuse code as you yeah. make new games this upgraded version now includes several scroll screen modes and longer levels with an auto scroll to the next new section wow. plus it'll have my own original music since i want this first message to contain the files once they're ready i'll post another message with a few things to show um so let's, I'm going to turn up a little bit there. So let's get into it. Base area. Whoa. So get a, get a handle on the controls there. Um. 
You're defeated immediately. Oh, there you go. Just takes me a moment here. <laughs> so you can see the Mega Man influence already. Okay. He's yeah. jumping. You can duck too. Right? Yep. Oh, you can slide? Can you slide? Whoa, how do I shoot again? It's up. Up. Oh, thank god. You're going to die. Just like right in the line of fire. Yeah, um... There you go. So, uh... This is, um, a uh, hard controller to be playing this, this game with. Uh, do you want this one? Yeah, do you mind if we pop over sure. real quick? Because this will be a completely different... Because this is definitely an NES style, like... Oh, yeah. Sorry, Cap. Atari! Okay. There you go. Try it out. I... Make sure it works. Yep. Okay, so this is uh, the message that uh, Sprybog sent to me. A little history on this game. I started playing around with the idea several months ago after I finished Zippy the Porcupine. It was around December of 2014. Yeah, this got a real Zippy style. It's so much easier, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to make a game with robot running around, collecting different powers, and using them in the level you as you play. I yeah. debuted the very first demo in 2016 at PRGE, which I did see it there. Um, when I compared the look of it to I other homebrews, I, I wasn't down? satisfied. So I put it aside and tried a brand new version of the game using DPC Plus to make it look better. Uh, uh, but I lost my horizontal scrolling feature and decided to make it a room-by-room -room platformer. Uh, DPC Plus allowed for much higher resolution and more sprites on the screen, but I was trying to do too much with it and ran very slow. I debuted this version at PRG 2017 and wasn't satisfied with the speed performance. A lot of the performance was due to the uh, extra RAM read and writing from the cartridge, which takes extra cycles to do. And with so many enemies on the screen, it lagged pretty badly. After that experience, I decided to go back to the standard 64K kernel. Take what I had done in the right in the first version applied to the new version. A lot of the original code is rewritten, and I also added a roguelite element to the game. Ah, I died. I also made it about rescuing your robot pals. I debuted this demo at the PRGE 2018. It's the version you see now, minus the boss fight and the title previews for the full version. Here is my standard write-up for PRGE. Duck and shoot. Or you can just I can't because I have to push point. up right to shoot. Oh, so it's not really. Okay. It's, I That's can't. That's not possible. Yeah. It's... Okay. I think you can jump up that high. It's just about time. No. There you go. There we go. It's, it's... Uh, one robot remains in the force, and it's up to you to rescue your fallen robot colleagues. See, this guy's tough. You you control the last robot, Robot Z. That's cool, I in, like this. In this demo, you run through a roguelike, horizontally scrolling base level to find and locate one of the fallen robots. To take back your base oh. for repairs so you can use their abilities in future levels. But to find your buddy, you must run through the base and battle the enemy's own robot force. There are four different types of robots in total. The standard robot will sometimes supply you with energy when you defeat it. Uh, the other three robots will give you their power when you defeat them. Whoa, cool. Once you gather their power, you can change with down and jump to cycle through your collective powers that you pick up. I don't think, I think you just started, so you don't have any powers yet. Oh, damn. That guy, if you kill him, that's too hard to get him there. I mean, I could probably do it, but... Yeah. Uh, there, there's a new power. Stop, stop, stop. Show the new power. Go down into the button. There you go, now. Whoa! And down the button, there's another new power. Hold oh, on. Oh, you do have a couple powers. I think I do. Whoa! You, you, you do use up your energy, though, when you use the special powers, oh, just like Mega I? Man. Oh, so cool. it's best to stay on the normal pea shooter that you have. Whoa, you would jump right into that one. It's just... Uh, be careful how much you use them. Every time you use them, um, a special power, it'll drain your power tank. Once you run out, you will return back to normal power until you gather more power capsules from those three special enemies. Good luck in your quest, and don't forget to have fun. Whoa. There we go. Here's the information from my post in the game in the forum. Uh, da, da, da. That's the same. That's the same. Left and right moves in that direction. Up fires the current weapon power. Fire button jumps. Fire button and down cycles through your powers to select, if you've obtained any. 
you're wasting your bullet there with that special power you're doing. There you go. Because you can easily shoot him. Or actually, he's got a shield, so maybe one of he, the other ones does help. He's interesting. I have, I've killed him a couple times already, though. There you go. Now you got some more energy. have a weapon that helps by standing there and shooting. Alright, just gonna do that. Yeah. It's rough, man. <laughs> it's a rough go, but he's guarding the exit. Yeah. And somebody said awesome death uh Yeah man, this is death cool. animation. Oh Splendid Nuts said night that nice death sequence. Yeah, it's very cool. And great music too. I don't know if you can hear it, but it does really good music. It's got like Baseline. So just stay in a spot for a second. I want to hear the music. That's cool. Also, this, this is world's difference on this this controller too. This game yeah. is totally meant for like. <laughs> um, you only have one life and an energy status. Every hit by enemy fire, an explosion, or even running into an enemy will knock it down. See, I don't this think is, that's a good is, idea, though. See, this is where it's nice to use a special power. Yeah, but you dropped down and got hit. You should have dropped your... Oh, there's no one that's like... I mean, like, I just don't know them well enough oh, yet. Like, see, that's that like an arc. It? That's yeah. just shooting. So, like, some of them one. some of them are better than others. Yes. So, so like... There you go. Now you've got that guy. And I think that one... Throws something that moves along... Yeah, kind of scans everything, so that would be... Oh, that one can block it. Oh, yeah. So I I would just use that one. It's just as good as any other. So now you've got 16 energy. And two, two power light like, almost dead. Oh, you can, you can't even touch you. Yeah, this one's a little bit... I don't know how you get your life back. Um, I don't think you... Is there a... Oh, you can just keep... Oh, farming! Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. And then bring him back. Ah, ah, oh no, he's there now. No, friend! <laughs> oh, maybe you shouldn't go that far back? Like, keep, yeah, keep the platform keep that, there? Like... And the I believe the levels are randomly generated. Oh, cool, I like that. So you, it's never the same twice. So you start with 20 life? And it goes down. Uh, D Mick Mew says, does look good. Looks like it'd be pretty fun. It is fun, man. This is a cool one. I like this game. This is this is pretty cool. And the wiping effect between and the like, levels. And I love the speed, too. Yeah, he's pretty fast to move, right? I, I do like that because I, I, there's a lot of um, slow-paced yes. like platformers, which, I mean, I think I'm just, you know, <laughs> ADD at this point. I'm just playing games that are so fast. Because, yep. I mean, contemporary games are just like, it's almost absurd how fast they are. They are, yeah. Uh, you can obtain special powers from the robots with special abilities. You receive their ability plus 10 power ability points. Oh, that's pretty good. Maybe it's a max of 20, though. We'll see. We'll see if it goes higher than 20. Uh, you, if you already have their ability, you will receive 5 power ability points instead. When you lose all your life energy, the game is over. Oh, you can obtain life energy from the regular bots that don't give any special powers. Like that guy? Is he a oh yeah, you got energy back. Now you're 21. Okay, so that's good. When you destroy an enemy, it will release the power module, and you will follow. It will follow you until you collect it. So it, you can try and avoid the the power up, but it'll go to you. So what does one do in this yeah, situation? The is, uh, is this you change your your there. Oh, not that one. Trying to that one. No. Do you have another one? Let's find out. You can make a run for it. Just hop over him and make a run for it, or just go get in there and just start shooting. This is a firefight if there ever was one. I uh, suppose says the power obtained looks like you're getting shot. I do not like that. I mean, the enemy's gone off the screen. Whoa! I would lob. I would use his power to the back of it. There you go. Take, Perfect. Take that. The regular bot won't always give you life energy. 
Okay. You wanna try it out? Have you made it to the boss yet? No. Oh. Is there a boss? Yes. So, I'll give you a little bit more time to uh, make it to the boss. Sure. But you don't have to fight every enemy. It's an option. I mean... If you're low on energy and you need to get some, then it's, it's a good idea. If you think you can defeat the guy easily. I have to, edge. yeah, I have to, like, aim it properly, right? Like, once I got the... Oh, oh. shit, you oh, get, like, it's a, my turn. Yeah, you'll go and, like, crush this. <laughs> I have played it a little bit, because it has been out for a while. But I won't say that I'm an expert. You have to, you have to, like, fire exactly when you fall? Yes. There we go. Oh, oh my god. It pushes you back. Yeah, it's, up to the top again when you get hit. It's just the, getting the timing of this. It's not bad though. Like it's 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 just Challenge. learning it. It's not it's not a it's a cool one. I like the this the controls of this game's good because it's not like um, no, I don't I'm, I don't feel like I'm blaming the game ever. <laughs> just drop down to that one and just shoot. oh yeah you're good. Oh. Just... Nice. What do you start with for power? I'm at eleven now. I only got twenty. Shot a bunch of times. Yeah, but it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's 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 not an easy. Spy Sprybug has always been great with uh, and music with percussion. Yeah. Oh, I can use his own power against it. Okay. Wait. Yay! And then I get it back. Yeah, man. His fonts are a little like that. Four is a little little funky. A little funky. Tactics. Yeah. This guy's easy. Right. That guy in that spot is so easy. So this one is That's like... the cool thing about this game is that there's different guys in different spots with different abilities and you have to figure out how to use your powers and with each one of them. These are the tough situations here. Oh, he's yeah. gonna fight you no matter what, so I would, w I would just wait till he's far away. And... I didn't get him. Back up to 16. Yeah, and you, you Actually, can... I wouldn't mind. Whoa, you can just farm. I'm going to just run from that guy. Ooh, maybe I can get him here. Yep. Can't I bet me. you can. He's, he's, got shooting a, he's got a nail it. He doesn't even know I'm here. It's like those guards that you shoot from far, far away, and they go, what was that? What was and that? they've got an arrow in their head. Oh, it's nothing, I guess. Oh, it's so funny <laughs> in stealth games, too. It's like you just blast them with an arrow. They're like, I guess I'm going to go back to just patrolling like normal. <laughs> They're blimping with an arrow in their like, leg. like, really? I'm gonna use this. I'm a big fan of stealth games. I've played a lot of stealth games. I'm back here. Oh god, that's not gonna Oh, this one might. There we go. And I think they're more powerful too than the bee shooter. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I don't quite reach. This is, this is, that's the perfect and it's got, situation. It tells you how much uh, the enemy uh, has, has for Yeah, and it's neat because I'm. It's sort of figured it out now. So you, there it is. That's great. Nice. I'm at 21 and 16. So yeah, so you're doing pretty good, man. Get me here. No Whoa, no. I don't want to fight you. Yeah, You're don't even worry. Spot. Don't even worry about it. No. Not every fight is worth it. I can't remember how many screens you have to do, but it's like six or seven before you get to the boss. Maybe eight. Okay. Ooh, actually, I want to farm this guy. It's easy, easy, and I want to get more energy for the boss. And more health. And uh, health, do. actually. Because he doesn't have a special. Dude, yeah, it's just timing, man. You're, you're, you yeah. just had your draw him out. Just, just wait till he fires, because he can only fire one bullet at a time. One bullet at a time. Oh, he's not, he's not giving it up. Yay! Go, okay, cool. we're doing good. Let's see how high this goes. 
Splendid Nuts said, just imagine this combined with the graphics from Zack Attack Mayday demos from, uh, oh, from earlier, right? Oh my god, yeah. 29, yes, farming. Yeah, because... Oh. Um, because people build on other people's successes, right? They see, oh, Hell you yeah. can do that with that? Okay, you got 32. I wonder how much life you can pack. That but I'm not gonna torture you guys. I'm gonna stop at 45. Cause I have I have encountered the bosses and it is not easy. It's not easy. And I do want to defeat the boss. It's so easy to become a hoarder in games too. Oh, the yeah. hoarding impulses is a easy. real it's thing. Real temptation. Plus I'm not at the end either, so I, I probably will lose some energy or might gain some energy as I go. You're probably right about 99 though, but you can get. Oh. Yeah. Risky. Ah. Just uh, 7800 Froggy does does TIA two channel uh, music with game sound better. I'm not sure how Froggy has done. That does some pretty good. Oh, that's how you're supposed to say that. Come yeah, on, man. I'm so far away. I hit his gun once. Pixel I can hit is his gun. Ugh. Draw him out. Oh, come on. Just one more. One more. Just That's one all more. I need. Mickey says that the kids, that my cat is constantly chasing the robot Z around the screen. Oh, I bet. I'm glad the uh, cats haven't seen it. Is Atari on the cat cam? Oh, yes. Yeah, he's just sleeping. Oh, great cat there. There we go. I'm at 45. Dude, okay, we're gonna go in. I'm gonna change to the. Is it the pink one? That pink one will shoot down. That's what I want. That's what you want in that situation. Did I get hit? Yeah, I don't how? know. How. I think he exploded. Oh, he exploded! But... So you gotta be far away from I wouldn't him. even bother with no, no, that no, no, guy. No, 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 no. It's not worth no, no, it. Not worth it. Let's change back. And. I feel like we're going in loops, though. You know what I mean? Like. Is it just no. randomly generated each it is. time? It is randomly, so it's not loops. Actually, I should have got that guy. I guess I just have a feeling of deja vu, you know? I think this is it. Boss time! No, no. I guess. That was a short level. <laughs> that was a really short level with no enemies. Oh, uh, no. Actually, don't bother. I don't even have any energy left to fight the boss. I do have health, but not, not energy. Maybe I need to I'll probably be fighting the boss now. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, I this. I need power -ups. Uh, what I need... Um, it's a boss <sighs> totally time. nailed it, totally right. Well, I'm going to use my powers first. Oh, you shoot her time. Whoa! Oh. Yeah, you're right. This is not um, a trivial situation. Holy crap, though. Thank God you got that health, man. Whoa. Did it. Because that's like, okay, that's like... You got Robo! A. Oh, A through Z. Yeah, we're Robot Z. We have to rescue 25 of our compatriots. Oh, no! But I think this is the demo, and I'm not sure if how far it goes. Oh, thank you, Nathan Strum, for subscribing. Subscribe for three months now. Woohoo! Hey, thanks, Nathan. That's awesome. Oh, credit time. Robot Z demo. That's the potential the that music. game is so cool. Ooh. I love. Skyway. I don't know what that is. Mine zone. Are these areas? Oh, these are areas. Soon to come. Right. Lava land, of course. There's gonna be water, there's gonna be lava, there's gonna be... That's the aesthetic. What is it? What else? Underwater. Sea sea wave. It's cool that he used the engine from, um... Oh, this rescue. Yeah, so that it's like... Ice, of course. There's always a slippery zone. Those I hate. But what I hate more is dark zone. Sand, of course. That's a classic one. Don't be his dark one. Of course there will be. Robo City. Robo City, Very nice. City, man. Junkyard, cool. 
I'm guessing there's going to be a lot more variation on enemies as well. Now it is your turn to defeat it. Okay. At least try. At least get to the guy. Because you can easily do that. Get to the, um, get to the boss. Let's do it. And he wasn't too bad. I think he only took like 10, 15 of my energy. Oh, yeah, now I'm going to talk about Harmony Kart versus Uno Kart. And the pros and cons of each of them. Now, this is definitely not a full-length feature review of them. It's going to be a little bit surface, but it'll get you a little bit of information to make, to maybe get you interested in looking at it more. Why? I hit too many times there. Well, yeah, but it's a situation where, like, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, you can reset the bad guys if you don't like the bad guy. Oh, I think you're safe there. Okay. Um, so there's a number of solutions for getting ROMs onto your Atari 2600, your VCS, besides having original carts. Um, so I'll only be talking about solutions that um, you can load new things on. Not the multi-card dip switch ones, because you can't put new homebrew or choose which games you go on. And there are a lot of them. There's some that have 128 games or 256. Some have menus, some have dip switches to pick. Um, but the first one that ever came out was actually during the original run of the Atari 2600, which was the Starpath Supercharger. Um, it came out in 1982, and you actually loaded games onto it through audio. And the games came on um, cassette tapes, and you would hook up, you'd put the Starpath Supercharger into your Atari, turn on your Atari, and it would have like a screen saying, I don't have one. And, and, and it would have a screen, and then you press play on your tape, and it would load in the game via audio, which was super cool. And um, if you're smart enough, you could make your own games by programming it on a computer, and if that computer could generate audio based on the code, and you could output audio, you could make your own games. So that was the first way that people could make their own homebrew games. Um, it had 6K of RAM, and then it was contained on a cart that plugged into your system. The second one was, um, oh, pretty sure Robot Z can run on Stella and Harmony. Harmony Encore, I believe, only, because Harmony has 32K. Let me look that up. Let's have Harmony Encore. Yeah, 32K. Um, you can flash it onto a Harmony. Um, because it's got 512 of flash memory, but you can't load it onto a Harmony. You have to have a Harmony Encore. Um, so back to this. The second one to come out was the Cuddle Cart, and that came out in 2001, so quite a bit later. 19 years after the Star Path Supercharger. Um, it's also known as a Super Duper Charger uh, during development, and it was developed by Chad Shell. It's also loaded games uh, through audio onto the cart and supported up to 64K. And only 204 of them are made, so they're really, really, really expensive to find and buy now. There's not much reason to get them now because there are cheaper solutions that have a lot more capability. So it'd be only for collector's items that if you wanted the cuddle cart. And it also lost the game from its memory once you turned the power off. So every time you'd have to reload it. Because there's no battery, it didn't have uh, flash RAM in it. And that was the same with the Star Pass Supercharger. Every time you wanted to play a game, you have to load it off of the tape. And sometimes that took many, many minutes. The next one to come out was the Crocodile Cart in 2004-2005. Um, released by Croco from Atari Age Forums. I don't have his real name here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and it was sold through the Atari Age store. Uh, you transferred games through, to it through a serial port, which stored them onto a 512K uh, flash memory. It had 32K of extra RAM uh, accessible for games. Uh, this cartridge was the first one to have a menu to be able to select games rather than load them in one at a time because it actually kept the games on it. Uh, it also allowed you to compile and update the game you're working on to check out the latest build of your game, 
through the uh, serial um, uh, port. DB, Which one DB should I do? Port? I think this is the boss. Which one should I shoot him with? You're in really good position. Which one should I kill him with? Um, I would, maybe I would purple? do... What does the purple do? That's the f big one that bounces around. I, maybe I like, wouldn't do that one. Maybe the yellow one? I don't know. The yellow, yellow one's one. a lob. Yeah. I would do the pink one because if you miss, it goes back and gets him again. Idea. I think Just this is it. Use is up it? all your energy. Yep. Use up all of your energy. Uh, with that one. Oh god, no, don't. There, when he's in there, use it. And when he's right beside you, use it. But don't. There you go. Easy. Death! You didn't even have to. Dude, oh, your last shot was a pea shooter shot. That's okay. Hey, I got Robo. Uh, BD. BD. Oh, Boulder Dash was developed on Croco. Very cool. Wow, that's a cool game. I like that. Once I got the rhythm of it and figured out how to do the things and played the like yep. tactics. And oh, you got out Robo S, so it's not always A. Oh. So yeah, I like the thing cool. uh, when I figured out like when I watched you do that purple thing, that was super useful because then I could just like position. And then it's amazing because really you just farm, get your stuff yeah. up, and then you just have to like. There's a lot of them I just skipped actually because I was like, what? Th what is the point? And even like, I, I don't know if he wants to keep that farming in. I think he maybe should keep um some information in ram whether you have cleared that part yeah of the if they're dead level. they should just be dead because yeah. otherwise it's pretty it's very easy as we've seen or the game just needs to be harder to yeah counteract that farming yeah like it's always a gamble every time you try and shoot some guy like, yeah like it's not you're not always going to get up every time you may go down <clears throat> So that was the crocodile cart. I won't be going over all the bank switching modes in each of these because they're massive lists and it's very boring for non-developers. Yeah. Um, so which brings us to the harmony cart was released in 2000. Um, this is the encore, but uh, 40 in 2009 for 49.99 for the standard edition. And it was more expensive later for the harmony encore, which we'll get to. Um, Harmony included a lot of improvements over earlier solutions. Uh, it included an SD card, which is awesome, because you could keep this in your system, never have to take it out. SD card, load games on it, play it. Um, it was the first cart to provide support for DPC games like Pitfall 2, yeah. so it was the first cart you could play Pitfall 2 on. Um, it supported games up to 32K in size and played the, all the original run of games except for one game called Mega Boy, which was 64K. Um, it was also programmable through USB. Hey, you can press and keep playing to keep it interesting. Yeah, I was just thinking. Try it again. Oh, you're at the credits. Um, maybe reset. Might work. Yeah. Just power down. That's okay. Yeah, you power down, power back up. Um, oh, no, try it again. Oh, shit. Maybe because it's dirty, maybe because... Just keep doing it until you get a black screen. There you go. second as it adjusts its video display there you go um it has a men it, it's programmable through usb so very modern up to date all computers have a usb port nowadays um it also had a menu system complete with directories and long file names it was the first multi-cart to have a processor on board for programming more advanced games um, which the limits are still being pushed with the brand new implementation of the cdfj driver that was used in galaga so, you know, we still haven't reached the limits of the Harmony cart. Then the Harmony Encore cart um, was released in 2014 for $84.99 for the pre-production version. Harmony Encore is an art upgrade to the Harmony with all the same cap capabilities, plus allowed games for up to 512K in the ROM or RAM and one megabyte of EEPROM storage. So huge games could fit in it. Harmony Encore was uh, conceived in response to concerns that the Harmony could not play 100% of games, uh, such as Boulder Dash Demo and some new 64 and up homebrew games such as Sibby the Porcupine, which is currently in development. That's old. Uh, currently new homebrew boards, which is Sibby the Porcupine is made by the guy of the game we're playing now. Currently new homebrew boards are being devised to support these larger games, and the Harmony Encore will support games with up to 512K ROM RAM, and it currently sells for $69 US. 
So then the Uno cart came out, which is in the system right now. It was announced in January of 2018, so it's just a year old. Um, created by Robin Edwards, who's Electro Trains uh, in the forums, and the firmware by Christian Speckner, who's known as Dirty Harry in the forums. The Uno cart is an open source multi cart that you can build yourself if you want to. Uh, and support carts up to 64k of ROM and 32k of RAM and currently sells assembled in the cart shell for $40 from Brewing Academy, who is McRory in the Atari Age forums, and that's where I bought mine from. Um, <clears throat> so the first post about it by Electro Trains. Um, some of you may know me from the Atari 8-bit forum. I designed a couple of open source multi-carts for the Atari 8-bit, the Uno cart and Ultimate cart. The Atari... Do I have that one? I'm curious... Is right now. Where is it? Somewhere else. I have to see this is um, like the Uno cart, this is something you can build yourself with minimal soldering. It requires an off-the-shelf STM 32F4 discovery board and an SD card breakout board. And a breakout board for the Atari 2600 slot. Everything can be hooked up with jumper wires. Um, and you can download the source code and the firmware uh, from GitHub. Um, the cartridge successfully auto-detects and emulates pretty much all the ROM dumps available in Atari Mania, um, with the exception of Pitfall 2, which was added later. Um, so far, this has just been tested on my Atari 2600 Junior. Would anybody else be interested in building one and finding any remaining bugs? I've got a few cartridge breakout PCB boards spare, since that's the only part that's hard to obtain. Just curious how much you know, if I can get. <laughs> yeah, go to 99. I'm just curious if it... Yeah, roll it! Roll it! <laughs> if, if 99 is the gig, I think that... I bet you'll be able to roll it. Because it's just the demo. He's not finished making the game. It'll go into either garbage, or it'll go back to zero again. Um, so, doing some comparisons between directly between the Harmony cart and the Uno cart. Not the Harmony Encore, because... The Har Har Harmony card and the Uno card are the same, similar price. So that's a that's a more fair comparison. The Harmony uh, currently is forty nine dollars assembled, and the Uno card is forty dollars assembled. You can get the Harmony yeah, card for go. forty with the bare board. You got hit. Yeah. That's because I'm like getting excited. <laughs> Oh, come on, you almost rolled it. I was at 99, so... Oh, were you? Did it max... Oh, don't get hit! Yeah. Okay, now one more, then we'll know. I think it maxed out. It's got to... Um, so the Harmony cart you can buy... You could buy, I don't think they're selling it anymore because it's not on the website, for $40. Or maybe it never gives you uh, an extra one. It's smart enough to know, no, you can't have it Yeah, anymore. I think it's like, it's kind of like... And that's how it prevents from going... Yeah. Smart! Very smart. It's just like, check if at 99, therefore don't... No? Oh, it's giving you power-ups now. No, it didn't. What was that big thing? It did nothing. Oh, just... That was health, that was health, and it, oh. and it didn't uh, that's usually a little affect dot. me. So there's a big dot that do gives you, know, you 10. Do you know if 64 game can be single flash to original Harmony? I believe so. Because it has 512 or 1 meg of flash in it. I, so I believe you can. Um, I think you have to use the USB. But somebody else knows more than me. Um, build quality. So the Harmony cart is in a classic cartridge. It's the same as any other normal looking Atari cartridge. Very good build quality. Um, very nice cutouts for the SD card and the USB. Um, the Uno cart is a 3D printed cartridge uh, with a kind of badly fitted label, unfortunately. It's a little bit bigger than it should be. And also when you open up the Uno cart, you have to take off the end sticker. So I'm not super impressed, um, but obviously it's cheaper to make than, than the uh, Harmony cart. In your Utter destruction. 95! <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, obviously, it's because it's a cheaper price, um, it's a little bit cheaper uh, build quality. Um, so that's one detriment to the Uno cart. One point down. One point up for price for the Uno cart. One point for Harmony for the build quality. 
Uh, for the menu system, Harmony has long file names, has 24 characters. Uno Kart has 12 characters, so Harmony beats it there, so one more point for the Harmony. You can weigh these however you want, if you don't care about long. And uh, I can't remember how many, I think it's pretty much unlimited items per directory Yeah. for the Harmony. And that's just based on file allocation table uh, limitations. Uno Kart's 80 items per directory. So still down uh, one point for Harmony there. Uh, for memory, Harmony has uh, 32K of ROM and RAM, I believe, and 512K of, e of Flash. Uno Kart has 64 of ROM, 32 of RAM, and 512 or one megabyte of Flash. So one point for the Uno Kart has a little bit more. The processor, the Harmony Kart is a set 70 megahertz ARM. And the Uno card, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't find what the speed of it was, but it is a faster ARM chip. Whether that makes a lot of difference or not, I mean, you can pack more instructions in it in uh, more time, in less time. So you get a little bit faster on the Uno card. So that's one point for the Uno card for speed, which you can do amazing stuff, obviously, still with the Harmony card. Um, firmware. Uh, for the both both of them, the Harmony Cart, obviously it's updatable firmware, but it is closed source. Uno Cart is updatable, but it is open source. So one point now for the Uno Cart. But Batari said um, a couple months ago in the forums, I adjusted the price of the Harmony to be more competitive. I think it's time to open source the Harmony after I sell down my current stock. So it looks like there is plans in the works to make this open source wow. as well. So there might be a spur of development happening when that happens. I haven't heard that it has gone open source yet, so we'll see. Um, and there was a price drop to $39 for the bare board, but it doesn't look like that's available anymore. Ease of programming uh, for the ARM. Harmony uh, programs can be tested in Stella. Uno Kart programs have to be tested on the Uno Kart currently. Uh, it sounds like um, Zach is building that into Stella. He has his own development system where he can run his games on Stella, so he may be able to make that available and talk to Stephen A to implement that into new Stella builds. That will be very exciting so that you'd be able to play his games, uh, his demos on your computer. Uh, and uh, Stephen A said one other point to consider that anything that runs on Harmony can also be emulated in Stella so that's boom, boon to developers but not everything that can run on Uno Kart yet can run in Stella that's one major area I want to work on post 6.0 Stella release which has now been released so now he, he might be open to that and which is great for our fundraiser, that he'll have more time to dedicate Absolutely. to bring on board uh, the Uno code so it can be uh, emulated in Stella, so that developers will have the choice of either one. Um, I also, He says, I also recommend Uno over the Harmony at this point, if for no other reason than the open source nature of the code and the responsiveness of the developers. So, Stella is open source, so you can see why Stephen A would be like, Oh, Uno's open source. It'll be easier to make them work together. So, it might be a good idea to make Harmony open source at this point. <laughs> You're just killing it now. Yeah, well, You're I, a little I, low. Well, no, I wanted this to This is a non-farming? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like, what's the next step? I was like, no farming allowed. Oh, there was, there's a good answer. Uh, Thrust says the CPU and the Uno cart... Um, can clock 2.5 times faster than Harmony. Wow, that's a big, big jump. So you can do two and a half times the instructions. That's crazy. That's massive then on the Harmony. That's massive. Um, compatibility, oh, programming interface with the Harmony card, it's USB. Uh, with the Uno card, nothing, you can't program it with the pre-built one. Um... We're almost done here. <laughs> it's all good. I'll do another one because it's like better to better to like rather than watching a blank screen. At Try least. and not kill any of them this time. I'll do a pacifist yep. run. Pacifist run. There you go, and not get hit. 
Well, yeah, I'll try to do that. We'll see if I... Because there, there are runs of games that I've seen people stream. No hit runs. Like, no... I mean, try not to get hit, but Bruh. you're going to. It's hard. Some of these are, like, protectors. Well, some will be impossible, almost. So with the Uno card, you don't have a USB interface on the card uh, itself uh, when you buy it uh, pre-built, but there is a USB interface. Um, you have to buy an ST-Link V2 USB device. Uh, it is four games today. We're almost to number four. I've got a couple more lists, think, comparisons, and then we're going to get to the fourth game. Um, uh, compatibility with classic games. Harmony is compatible with all games but one. The Mega Boy. I don't know. But I don't know how much people want to play Mega Boy, so. Uh, and Uno Kart is compatible with all classic games because it has 64K of, uh, RAM. See, there's you just gotta situations run through like run through them. Don't fire a bullet. Just run right through them. Wait till he fires, then get in there. Well, I, I get killed if I hit him, too. Oh, do you? Oh, but you still have some life left. That's about conserving your life. Um, so they're pretty even on the compatibility with classic games, except for one. Compatibility with homebrew. Harmony is compatible for with everything except the two games we saw today <laughs> at the top of the show. So no. very, very, very compatible. Oh, you made it to the boss? I did. Well, you're not going to beat the boss with the death that you've encountered. Well, that's possible. Um, Uno Kart is compatible with... Uh, Every game except games that use DPC Plus, CDF, CDF games, the ones that use the ARM processor on there, um, which excludes a lot of big name homebrews such as Draconian, Scramble, Stay Frosty 2, Wizard of War, Mappy, and Galaga. So if you don't mind missing out on those for now, and you're planning on buying them on cartridge, um, you won't be able to play them on the Uno cart. So that's a big. Harmony games should be adaptable for the Uno, Uno card. Yeah, they should be, be able to be rebuilt. Um, just have to recode them because it's got an ARM processor on it. A faster one than this. So maybe somebody eventually will make a conversion uh, that will convert most of the code over. Oh, they're almost out. Oh, that guy's going to be tough. Oh, no. I'm dead. Yeah. yeah. You can fall down that little crack there. Um, and uh, But Dirty Harry from the AA forum says... Um, to a question that was posed, is it ever possible that Uno could eventually run DPC like Space Rocks? Uh, and Dirty Harry says, definitely. I did some preliminary experiments in emulation that mimic the STM address space and was successfully able to trick the DPC Plus games into running them. So, uh, the Harmony cart, I mean, the Uno cart may just be able to eventually run those games natively, possibly, but I don't know enough. Yeah, there. Nathan Strum just said the exact same things. Uno card should be adaptable to Harmony games. Um, Anita Harmony greatest hits with all of them bundled into one giant ROM. Well, um, I, there are downloadable packs, but there's no greatest hits pack. Um, I mean, there's issues. I mean, most of these games, as long as you package downloadable versions of it, most people wouldn't have a problem with it. Some people might. Um, because some people want you to download their game from their site where you get their information and you're guaranteed a proper ROM. And the last one, ease of use for, like, just somebody wants to play games. Five points left. Good luck. You could do it. You could do it. Oh. You'd have to jump over him when he's in the pit. Yeah, that's the trick, man. So they're both easy. You load ST... ST uh, uh, load the games through the SD cards in both of them. Super, super easy to, to load on. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both right now as a game player. Obviously, the huge disadvantage of the Uno cart is that you can't play a lot of really advanced homebrew games that are out now, like that list I just said. Like, you can't play Galaga on it. It's not happening if you buy an, only an Uno cart. You have to have um, a Harmony cart to play that. Uno card is $10 cheaper. If that's a big deciding factor and you don't have the money for the Harmony card, that will be uh, maybe a decision for you uh -oh. because you can play a lot of games. A lot of homebrew, all the original games. So those are the pros and cons. No. From a developer point of view, no. I don't know uh, as you get depth, more in-depth with programming them. 
it might be easier on one, harder on the other. Obviously, this is a big established programming database of how to do things for the Harmony card, and it's just starting for the Uno. So if you want to push the limits and 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 be on the forefront, you can be on both, but Uno card is, has a faster processor. So if you are making really advanced games, maybe you want the Uno card. But that's, that's my end of my spiel. If you want to get in more into it, definitely visit the Atari Age forums. There are lots of threads about the Uno card and um, developers talking about the pros and cons. So, now that I've bored everyone except for the developers... Uh, we're going to play another game? We're going to play a new game. So we're done with Robot Z. Okay. I think I'm done with Robot Z. Too. You have done everything possible now. I almost beat the boss, man. I made it so close. On pacifist mode. Yeah, I was like, I had my last run, I was really close. Oh, shit, I need to hold the button down, right? Nope. Oh, on this, yes. Yeah, because it's a Genesis. Ready? Got it. Working? Okay, cool. Is it the bottom one? Yeah, just go into that, but don't start it yet. Okay, it's the Deep Stone Catacomb. Cool. Yeah. Actually, while we're still on Robot Z, um, go down to it and start it. I'll play the Robot Z? Yeah, just, we're just going to start it. And this is on the Harmony Encore, so you, people can see that it does run on the Harmony Encore. We just made a... But I think my system might have an issue <laughs> Nathan Strub, of course, the best way to play homebrews is to buy them and support the developers. Yes, of course, and you don't have to worry, but see, that happens. And that is the thing that happened also on that RPG Ultima game. Yeah. It does that flicker thing and cuts out, and that also uses the Encore interesting system so i'm gonna get back to both developers on that and see if it's my system if it's my encore cart the, the ram is foobard or something but anyway so let's restart it and not play that game got the got it cool um so deep stone catacomb Let's load up Deep Stone Catacomb. And this is a world premiere exclusive Holy shit. RPG that you will love because it's an RPG. Yeah, it's my favorite. And we'll go back to my notes. This is Deep Stone Catacomb. Uh, this is uh, the first ever build of it that was released to anybody. Um, and it's by Mick Crocker, a.k.a. Mick Muse, who is still hopefully with us and isn't uh, uh, falling asleep because he, uh, he works nights. Ah. So right now he's normally asleep. Oh, he's still here! Yay! Hey, dudes, good stuff. This is a very long show. Obviously, we're um, it's the first two, one back for a while. Two and it's a half all hours good. in. Yeah, we have a lot to catch up on, and and I knew the Uno Kart episode was going to be big. Um, so let's get some notes on here. Let's start it up. Um, I believe this is his first game, and the really interesting. Hey, that's you, buddy. So don't start anything yet. This uh, this was an interesting game because he made this game in 30 days. It was a challenge to himself that he would make a game. It says, hi, uh, he posted in the Atari Age forums, Deepstone Catacomb in 30 days, 360 hours. Wow. Hi, everyone, I'm Mick. A little while ago, I decided to try and learn Batari Basic and finish what I hope would be considered a good game in 30 days of programming. I kept a daily journal as I did this and the game is now complete. Amazing. I'm now currently working on creating the artwork and designing the manual, but I thought I would release my development notes as a blog in the meantime. So the link to the daily blog is above if you are interested. Cheers, Mick. So I will load up the instructions so we know how to play this game. Cool. Should I jump in or should I wait for the... Um, that's a good question. Oh, did I? Because I'm ready for some catacombs. Ah, uh, let's jump in. Let's let's piss hey. ev piss everyone off and look at that. Animations in the in the uh, intro screen. So I'm gonna guess that that sword is gonna be useful. Oh, beautiful animation on the numbers scrolling yeah, up. Yeah, holy shit. Okay, so we got two ways to go. It seems the fire effect is awesome. Like everything in this game looks really really nice. Very pastel well, colors. Hey. Really soft looking colors. Hey. And I might, oh my, and I've seen some of this, but did you see that coin That's so spinning good, around? Man. It's unbelievable. Like, reminds game, me game. of the graphics in uh, Mario Brothers, the original one where you're coming out of pipes and, and there's coins in it that spin around, and those look Holy shit. almost just Ooh. as good as the arcade coins. It's unbelievable. 
So obviously this is uh, very Zelda inspired. Yeah, I'd say it feels very Zelda. Um, and you can run with the button. So if you need to pick up coins, you can get a little bit faster. Cool. And it does remember where you've been and what you've killed in the whole level. Which is pretty amazing. Which is awesome. So you don't have to, oh, I've got the wrong, wrong way in the maze. And now I have to fight all these guys again. Which is my big complaint in these type of games. Yeah, that's normally a huge issue. And it's mostly done because the Atari has very little resources to keep track of all these things. But these programmers are taking advantage of the added RAM on these new cartridges, right? The Encore and the Uno cart. I'm just going to... So let me get I'm the just instructions the over. Room. Yeah, cool. And then this one's just that cool. Okay, did I go this way already? Yeah, I did. Okay, so I've been everywhere. Now it's... I'm going to... Oh, dude. Level two. And it looked like you could jump off the ladder while you were climbing down, too, in case you made a mistake. Uh, oops, cool, cool. Off. Damn. Whoa, okay. Um, there's a thing that's coming at me. Okay, cool. So this is... Is the... there new enemies? I haven't been watching. Oh, yeah. There's, like, these... these... So this thing is new. Indestructible? Yeah, but... Oh, free life! Hey! Nice. Or free something. Health, I believe. The left is health? Or the right is health? I don't know yet. I think I think life is probably correct. Yeah. Okay. So you're pretty much clearing rooms. Well, this is a 32k game. Hey, look. I got some meat. Okay, that is health, I think. Oh, okay. there's the, uh, oh, thank you, RC70, for posting his blog. It's very detailed about how he made the game, so it'll be a very good resource for people who want to make their own games. Run, run. Yeah, I got it. Too. I got it. Very good resource for people ah, who want to make ah. the games, uh, games themselves. It's on top of the scorpion. But it does disappear after kill the scorpion, yeah, totally. so that's good. But it, was, but it was rough in that situation. Cause yeah, because it's a small room. Small room, and it's like right on top of each other. Hey, there's the one. Okay, let's get the instructions. I'm just going to make sure that I've been all through everything. Yeah, so that's that's the entrance. Level I'll two. On here. This is where I got the health. Cool, I'm just I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Right. The good thing about this, it's very easy to know where you've been because there's no well, enemies. Well, it's nice because I can totally just... And run, just run right through it. Yeah, I think you've been pretty good. Everything. Level three. Ooh, different color. I like it. Okay. Dude, it's a ghost. What? It's oh, it is. Oh, nice. Take that ghost. I wonder if I get new weapons. Really good um, design ah. of the enemies. Oh, good. Whoa. Oh, hello. Ghost. Ghost. So, software. Whoa, whoa. Game. Yeah, very Zelda. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Zelda is one of the best oh, games of all time. Very celebrated. The first game. Zelda on NES is so fucking good. Yeah, ground. I, I just can't. I can't even. That's just like even in like. I need uh, to play it one day. <laughs> I would say even in like my modern like if you compared even a modern games, that's yeah. one of the best games. Wow. I would say because it's just, just the depth of it. The depth of it. The ideas of the game too. Having things like um the walls you have to break open with bombs right. having things like you can swim you need to get like in your upgrades and the hearts like it's just right. it, so much rpg stuff came out of that game that like that people have just straight ripped off okay here's the uh says hey james and erlen and darcy and Tanya. hey uh thanks for what all what you all do it's greatly appreciated I guess I'll start by saying that I took on this project as a 30-day challenge to myself to learn and code a game for the Atari. Just something to strive for as I went. I began this on September 10th of 2018 and gave it a full day's attention on any free day I was able to find. So it's not 30 days in a row. I think so I might 30 die days. soon, man. Oh, yeah. Because um, I'm like low on health because it's but getting a bit harder. We'll see if those are lives when you do die. Oh, a big, big double-wide scorpion. Oh, yes, oh there yep. We go. You lost a life. That's okay. So you get reset back to your starting position on that level. Okay. Whoa. See, Whoa. He, he, like, comes Ooh, at vicious. me, man. Once he touches you, he's like, Argh. Holy Argh. shit. Okay. Uh -oh. Whoa. New well, I wouldn't do that yet. Oh. 
that, you, barely, that, you barely started that. No, level. that was it. That oh, was that all was there it? was. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, I also recorded and what I accomplished um, well, at the end of like each day. Fire at me, man! Holy shit! Okay, got new health though. That's good news. And decided towards the end of the project, I would post them as daily blog oh, as I continued shit. to polish. Wow. Okay, this is game. It's like a zombie harder. that's shooting stuff. It's not a zombie if you shoot it. It's just a, just a dude. But I gotta like dodge this <laughs> and somehow like get this guy. And too. he's shooting at you. Oh, you got a little bit frant frantic there for a second. There you go. Oh, you got something else. Still got hit though. Uh, I also recorded what I accomplished at the end of each day and, deci and decided towards the end of the project I would post them as a daily blog as I continue to polish and create the art for label box and manual. I did manage to finish the game in 30 days. However, I'm still polishing. And will probably be for Level. another 30 days. Let's Case in point, I got this game this morning. This is like brand new build. Was that a switch? Yeah, but I'm not switching it until um. Until you clear out everything. Because I figure that like I'd like to I'd like to know what the switch does before that I like do anything. Does it reset? Yeah. yeah, it does. Um. So I'm needless to say the game is complete, but still in beta. I'm aware of some minor issues and will work to iron them out before a public release. Whoa. I'm very interested in what you think and have to say about this game. What's oh there's is that a, is that's a lock or something? I'm gonna die though. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I haven't seen anyone play this yet besides me and my girlfriend. So I am sure some things can and will be adjusted, such as the difficulty settings. It's been pretty pretty, pretty easy, easy so far. Pretty easy. You're at the level that you started. I mean you have three lives and full health. So that's a switch. Let's find out about that. Did it open? Key. I'm just not gonna. Yeah. Oh, is that a closed door? Yeah, that was a oh, locked door. I'm curious what's in this one, but I'm just feeling like it's not worth. Can you switch it back? I, I think I can. And close the door again? Oh, yeah, let's check I want to see out. what it looks like. Oh, okay. It opens the ladder. Okay, that's be, cool. You can switch I gotta be careful though, because <laughs> I can get killed pretty easy. I mean, I could clear these so guys, but I just feel like so it remembers how many enemies left in the room, but not which types. No, it doesn't remember the. Whoa! No, it resets. Whoa! Whoa! This game got harder. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Ah. Get off it! Oh, oh my god! No, it resets the room if you die or if you exit the room. It uh, starts from the beginning. Okay. This is going to get rippy pretty soon. <laughs> yes, because they shoot. You need a projectile. Do you think he uh, is going to give you a projectile? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so, man. But, but see, this is getting to the point where it's less... It makes less sense to clear the rooms. Yeah. Because what do you... What do you like, see, I'm just getting hurt, right? You might get health, but it's pretty low chance of getting health See, so I far, feel like I'm it? just going to get killed, man. I, I mean, like, I want to find out if there's anything. Yeah, I'm just going to keep pushing down. But it gets harder to push down. There might be things you're missing, like upgrades. That's a good point. Oh, shit. But it's a lot of coins. You bring up a great point. Um, I'm currently finding new ways to crunch the code and freeing up more space. That as hey, man, is I there upgrades? We'll know soon. It, we'll find out, yeah. It does remember clear rooms if you die. Yes. It doesn't reset the whole maze. See? I'm currently, uh, so far, I've freed a couple hundred bytes. However, my graphics bank is full. So I'll not be able to add any new graphics without sacrificing something. Oh, well, you can always do color variations. I mean, Ugh. See, it's hard, man. That's a tough room in there. It's hard to know, like... I mean, I'm just... You're just looking for the ladder? I mean, I can keep just, I can keep going, but it is one of those things where it's like, I got such little health right now, and... On the title screen, game one, this is... Which is the one you played, right? You, chose you did miss one? the Master Sword. Fuck me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that's, uh... Oh, this looks like the end. That's hilarious. It is. Wow, what Some, a great something dragon. Something tells me that the Master Sword might be useful for this dragon. I'm, Possibly. I'm not gonna lie. I don't uh, think you've hit it. I haven't, though. I haven't seen it flash or anything. Oh, it doesn't flash. You might need the Master Sword to kill the dragon. Does that seem right? I would definitely make the dragon flash. If you hit it, oh. game over. That's what I get for not doing a master sword. Yeah. Oh, did you just press the button to start game one again? Yeah. Yeah, you got the master. No, you didn't get the master sword. So you do want to kill all the enemies. Very nice looking dragon. Um, but yeah, I would f see the normal enemies um, flash when you hit them, but the dragon didn't flash. So it'd be very useful if it. I flashed. think I need that. 
Master Sword, man. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. If I know anything about games, and I don't you know much, it. it's... You need it. Uh, game two, uh, the enemies take double damage and the game is winnable. Game three, the enemies take double damage and the game is infinite. This mode is mar oh. far more random than game one and two. This is all about seeing how far down the dungeon you can make it for highest possible scores. So it just keeps going on game three. Infinite harder and harder dungeons. and harder. I like that. Every game mode is a randomly generated dungeon with predetermined order of monster encounters, except on game three where the monster encounters are completely random as well, so you can be throwing Whoa. super hard monsters right away on, on game three. Uh, the left difficulty switch will determine the overall base speed of the game. B is for be beginner, A is for advanced. We're on beginner right now. The game will only allow you to make these changes before or during the title screen. If you lose all lives and get game over, you'll return to the title screen where your current score will be displayed on rotation. The score will also rotate to show you what last floor you perished on and what your high score of the day is. So it has high, high score. Hey, that's cool. And your recent score. So you should definitely look into um, putting the save key in so you can always keep track of the depth, like the full high score. Um, use the joystick to move, fire to swing your weapon, and hold the fire button to run. Running will be necess necessity to deeper down in the dungeon as you go. Dude, I f thousand percent agree. Yep. I've read on the forums that some people very much dislike the repetitive sounds of footsteps in games. If you switch the TV type to black and white, this will mute the sounds of the player's footsteps. Man, that's cool thinking. Thanks for that. Really smart. Ugh. Oh, it is on black and white right now? Oh, no. It's on color. Uh -huh, I can't see. Sorry. That's okay. I think the footsteps are okay for me. I mean, we don't have it very loud. But wondering if you already have full health, can you ha leave a health object in a room and come back for it later when you need it? I highly doubt that. Highly, highly doubt that. But Ugh. would you ever want to do that? <laughs> well, only if you're full health. Yeah. I I doubt it. Jawas? Oh, they do look like Jawas, don't they? They really do, man. Oh, you died. It's okay. I I've kind of figured I would. I have a hard time judging so difficulty. Let me know if beginner is too hard for you guys. No, it's not too it's hard. This is perfectly good. balanced for me. I mean, we'll know when you get the sword. Well, yeah. I mean, the fact that like normally I, I can clear stuff pretty easily. So, I mean, I think the... It did get harder on the... I'm yeah. not going to lie. Um, this game with the sword is challenging because I have to get close. If this had a bow and arrow or something, I think it would be dead easy. There would be but no competition. Maybe on the harder levels. Because a bow and arrow good would be okay. Because in all honesty, like... Actually, with the dragon and the bow and arrow, it'd like, be too easy. This game would be just, like, the easiest thing in the world yeah. if I didn't have to get so close with this sword. Um, so I'm curious what this Master Sword's like. I mean, if I have a bit more range, that would make a huge difference. Yeah, if it's a little I bit have Because I have to get really close in order to, like, do anything. Oh, and yeah. It, Items do disappear after a few seconds. So. And there's no farming, which means no, that... Oh, um, that's very smart. No farming. Which makes, which makes it definitely harder. Okay, the items, the sword, can hit fire attack in four directions. 100 points for picking it up. Coins give 50 points, reward for killing an enemy. Meat restores your health, 50 points. Mushroom gives an extra life, 50 points. I need a mushroom. That's what mm, I need. Yeah, you do. See, Especially is, when you get to the dragon. See, this is where it's getting harder, right? There you go. Now you're full. You're absolutely full. I think four is maximum. Oh, see, and then I'm trapped too. So Mc, like, McMuse like says, see, like this is this is challenging. Like, th like see, like this is not this is not easy shit. No, two guys firing like, at. And me. I have no option but to kill them. Yeah. Right. And oh like, yeah. There's no exits. So oh, like you died. Well, yeah, it's not it's not easy <laughs> shit, man. Because I, I gotta I'm get just watching, I gotta so. get close, and I gotta like, and they're gonna spit at me, and they're erratic kind of <laughs> movement. Plus, there's like a thing that's like. I think floating. the movement's really good. The AI. Oh in this man, game it's is great. Really nice. Like so, like these. This is this is a huge um, boost. So like, I'm, I think that. Oh, I think the trick to these guys is to walk into them with the sword. Um, I can't because like, see, I can't hold it down. Oh no! Tap 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 and move move move. So it's like it's <laughs> not. It's, hard, eh? it's not. Um, the master sword. This fires out at enemies in all eight directions, but only when the player is full health. Shit. Two hundred points for picking it up. The master sword is hidden on the same floor of every game mode. Once you leave the floor, you cannot go back. <gasps> so, so there you got it. So you have full health now. So oh, it is a projectile. Okay. 
but you have to maintain your full health. Okay, this is a different game now. Yes. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to crush this, but like... I, I would say at this point, avoid everything. Oh, you don't go down. You can keep using it. That's good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you don't need anything else. Like, do you need an extra life? See, oh, now you're see, down. Now I'm fucked, right? Yep. Now you have to get back that health. <laughs> so now you don't actually have the Master Sword? Or does the Master Sword enable you to hit things a little bit better? Like, is, do you find it faster, like, to kill the person? It's about the same. It's about the same. Ah, uh, now you're full. See, do not I'm gonna stay do, far I'm gonna try away. my best, man, but, like... Far okay. away. And it kills, oh, so well. One hit. Oh, wow. One hit wonder. Um, what... You most likely want it during any battle with a dragon. Yeah, for sure. Whoa. See, this is like the stakes are fucking high, man. Yeah. Come down. Yeah, let him come to you. I just, I dare He's you. He's like, no, no, I don't want him. There are eight main, main enemies. I haven't decided proper names yeah, yet. Yeah. Three elite, three dragon end bosses. Okay, I think I can. I think I can kind of kill this dragon with this guy. Whoa. I think so too. Oh, those guys are a little bit tougher. And taking two hits. Oh, that just took one. Oh, he took two. I had. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no! Watch out! See, this is not easy. No. A lot of Fuck dodging. It. No! Oh, oh no! It's okay. Oh, no, you need your health. What I can do, do not exit this level without health, full health. Because hey, I don't know if it, you're at the dragon. No, yet. it's no big deal. I'll just die before I hit the dragon. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because like, yeah. Well, cheese the game. Well, no, it's like I'm at four. I got four full health. I'm just yeah. gonna do it. That's true. Oh, oh shit. That's where it would have been nice to clear some. Red levels. scorpion moves at random. Blue scorpion tracks the player. Hood, he's called, not Jawa. <laughs> hey, yeah, I call him Jawa. Uh, moves at random, takes two hits to kill. Mummy moves at random, throws boulders at players. Orc tracks the player, throws large boulders at player. Skeletal spider tracks the player, throws large bol throws boulders at player, takes two hits to kill. Fire elemental bounces back and forth on walls. Have you seen that? Fire elemental? Oh boy. Uh, tracker. This is invisible. Invincible. Oh, that thing. That's called the tracker. That line. Um, and tracks the player all around the room. Once the room is cleared of all the enemies, the tracker will vanish. Game modes 1 and 2 have one elite monster on every eight floors. It doesn't say what floor you're on, though, does it? No. You'd have to keep track of that. Maybe that would be good to have some, that somewhere. Like, maybe when you... Like, interstitial or... Oh, your marker at the beginning she could say totally seven eight. or eight, but it goes infinites. Oh, this is it. It's okay. Oh, you're not full health. It's okay. Oh, yeah, it is okay. That's right. But you only have one life left. So not now it's time to be careful. And you lost it. You're trying my best. <laughs> it tells you the floor you are on at the beginning of each level. Oh, did we miss that? Yeah. Okay. We apologize. That's a nice colorful dragon. Oh, it, look, it does show when you hit it. But I have to do it with the Master Sword, it feels like. Oh, I just think it was because I was on the other one. That may be it. Maybe you have to hit it in the head. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yes, there you go. Um, that makes it really hard. No! It is mine to play. Now it's my turn. Yeah. So this we can are do on... way better than me. I, I just made right some there. really stupid decisions at a certain point. Okay, game modes one and two has one elite monster on every eight floors starting on the fourth. These are larger versions of the monsters above and take more damage to kill. Sometimes you can easily bypass them if you wish, but sometimes uh, they will lock you in and are required to be defeated. There are three dragons that you must defeat before completing the game. There's a dragon's lair on every eighth floor followed by a floor of treasure that the dragon was guarding. The dragon's by far the most difficult enemy in the game. Of course, you must also defeat the Dark Lord before you're able to Dark reach Lord. the princess. Oh, wow. I've also added an Easter egg to the game that pays homage to classic Atari game. Um, one of my favorites 
that had me dreaming of making my own game when I was a kid. Mm. Oh. That would give too much of a hint if uh, we knew what if we knew what game it was. I think strategy. The monster only throws That's rocks and boulders in the directions they are facing. Use this to your advantage when attacking. Uh, That's a fucking good tip. I didn't think about tip. that. Only in the direction they're facing. Only one rock or boulder is ever thrown at a time. Use this mm. to your advantage. So once it's thrown, go in for the attack. Oh, and you can if a rock is thrown your way, you can block it with your sword if you're quick enough. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. That sounds hard. The dragon has a weak spot, which we found out about. Yeah, yeah we finally figured that out. Attempt to kill as many monsters as possible to collect lives from mushrooms to help you in the final dragon's fight. And that's about it. Although space is very limited on the card at this point, any suggestions on the improvement are very welcome. I like the balance of this a lot. I feel yeah, like I feel like it's easy good. enough um, to. Uh, you got it all. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's easy enough to like um, play and potentially clear, but also hard enough that um, like I'm trying to. It's still challenging. A good hint on the scorpions is attack them from below. Yeah. Because if you attack them head on, they have a gap. It's a good point. And you can't hit them in that gap. Like if you do this. Very easy from below, I find. Way better. Ah! That's... Mm, I don't like that. When you enter a room and there's a guy there and it hits you immediately. It's just the way life goes sometimes, <laughs> though. <laughs> It does, yeah. And it's not it's not totally I mean I don't need to do any more in this level. Um Ooh. three. What do you I think what it was like I think was? it was four, but I could be wrong. It's gonna be Jeez, now it's time. It's on, eh? Oh yeah. Yeah, this is where I would be clearing it's probably this level or the next one if I remember correctly. I should have paid attention to which, which one level? It was. But I, I'm going to clear this one. I think it's four. That was my, that's my guess. That makes sense halfway, right? Yeah. That was so funny. I'm like, I, did I miss anything? Ah, uh, the fucking... <laughs> the, big thing. the only thing that, that you matters. can pick up? Uh-oh. <laughs> Good luck, dragon. Yeah. Good luck with your pea shooter. Jawas indeed, Arena Foot, man. These are for sure Jawas. Now, things I can say about this game, the look of it is gorgeous. Movement, style, movement is feeling. so good. Animations, um, the balance so far. It's really great. I, yeah, it's challenging right away for beginners, um, but it definitely ramps up a bit. <laughs> oh my god. Should, oh, found it. Now I'd be... I'd be clearing. Like, I, maybe I would put in, like, make the enemy at least X away from you or X away from you. Top yeah, bottom. it does suck when you enter in and I you immediately get hit. It's just like... I mean, it, it's real life fair. Yes, it is. A, a thing is going to be there. But game fair? Ah! Oh, my God. Oh! Jeez, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this is probably one of the hardest levels in the game, hands down. Yes. Because this scorpion's aggressive, oh, that big one. That big one, yes. And that thing that's relentless and moves at the same speed as the scorpion. So it's... Yeah, and sometimes it overlaps, and that's when it's a, it's a nightmare. It's, that's oh, not it's all the time, which is nice. And you can't exit from the room. <laughs> yep. That's the hard part about it. Oh, oh, oh is that yeah, it? That's it for this one, yeah. Very some, random. Some of them are simpler. So maybe it's uh, level five. Yeah. It's got to be level five then. Yep. This is it. Don't always throw These thing, guys, but... this is where it gets really hard, man. Ah. See, and this is where I almost just started skipping some of these levels. You know what I mean? Right. I was but like... you can't because you need the sword. When you get the sword, then you can start skipping. No, but I mean, like, you can tell, like, for some of them, there's nothing significant. You know what I mean? Like, oh. like, like it's, like it's locked off. It's hard, though, because you have to, because these guys, I found it hard not to get hit. There we go. There you go. That's Oof. a good one. Yay. <gasps> Jesus. Oh, you can, yeah, you can, you can block can it shoot for it. sure. You yeah. get, you gotta get some wicked time, you know. Yeah. Get out of here. Get over here. And it's tricky because, like, you know, if you do end up skipping them, well, then you're going to have to deal with them later. Yeah. If you die. Okay. Now, this is definitely... There's probably... a ladder, which is good. Oh, God. So I 
I still don't know. It's good you can jump off the ladder. It's really cool. Like, it starts going down, but you're like, nope. Yeah. Oh, God. Nice mechanic. Very, very smart. So that you don't have to press a button to go down the ladder, but you can also get off the ladder. And also, um, it's fairly uncommon, the mushrooms and the meat. They are. So, so and I think they're pretty balanced. So, so like, far. I would say at the moment, ah. like, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say at the moment, if you're like, um, uh, wanting to like, like, hoping to get health from killing people, yeah. you know, more often than not, it's not just not gonna to. happen. Hey, yeah. Man. So farming is not. Well, you don't. You can't even. You can't. Farm. There's no. There's no yeah. option. Maybe it's level six, because you seem to have done most of this level. Yeah, it's like the last of it. Yeah, it makes sense that it would be closer to the end than yeah. in the middle. Keep checking it out, though. I mean, I think you got it all. But... I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. Oh, maybe not. I can. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Level, level six. six. It's a cat oh, stream again. And they shoot things. Yeah, these Wonderful. guys are tough, man. Wonderful. And they shoot things. Oh my god. Yeah, this is uh, pretty rippy, this one. Which way did I go? Oh, the exits are open. Yeah, I guess I guess probably because you died, it's, it's just oh. offered as an option, which is pretty cool. I need that sword. Oh yeah. I'm gonna die soon. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Okay, hey. that's good news. That's really good news. Mushroom would be even better news. Yeah, I don't that know. That was helpful. I don't, I don't know what's happening in this run. Something. I think that might have been some meat. Yeah. But I'm. Um, but uh, honestly, like the the la Yay. the lack of um of of like extra health makes it pretty tough. Yeah. Oh, God, God. And there's a ladder. I'm not quite keep, done. Keep looking. So did the sword was just in a room? It was just in a room. By itself. Yeah. You didn't have to. Def you probably had to defeat the person before the room. I think I'm done this level. Maybe it is in the second to last level. Um, it wasn't for me, but, mm. uh, but... Did I miss it? Oh my god. It's very possible. I've cleared this all out. I've cleared every level so far. Tastes like chicken. Meat and a stick. Cool. <laughs> That's very, um, what, what game is that? That's very Castlevania. Yeah. That's what that is. Okay, level seven. Ooh. The stakes have never been higher. <laughs> Whoop. I've never seen this level. No. This, this is this is new. Design. That's cool. You've outdone yourself, Mac. Oh yeah, Mick. Mick, sorry, Mick. Mick Muse. Story should be on level five. Oh god, I left, missed it. But level five, it wasn't there. Remember, level five was that ridiculously oh, short yes. one. Oh yes. So there might have been a bug. We, we cleared out level five. It was like three rooms. Yeah. And I went through all three rooms. Was there a secret I needed to hit a wall, maybe? Like, I needed to, like, go blam, bam, It's bam. possible. Maybe you did that. Maybe you hit a wall. He said, I think I noticed a bug in the latest version. The short, short sword should be... Yeah, so he, he was a bug. Okay, so we're going to move on to the... Well, let's look at version three of it. Cool. I'll let okay. you play again. It's, oh god, okay, stakes are gonna be tough. Cause level, this is, what is this? This is extra hard? This is unending and extra hard. Whoa, Sassy. And it's random. Like, the guys are hard right away. Or, or easy right away, too. Oh. Thank god. Cats are fighting. It's cat cool. fight. So this will be a good game for the uh, twelve hour. Oh, for sure, because we didn't we didn't beat it. Yeah, be curious. Oh man, I bet you I can beat this guy. I bet you I can do it. If I need it. Okay, we'll play for this for a bit. We'll, we'll go to level two, and then we'll go back to the first one. You think you can beat it? Oh no, I mean that for twelve hour oh. marathon, for sure. Yeah. Do you want to try and? Beat 
sure. Today. Do you want to do you want to give it one more run? Yeah, let's give one more real run. I'm not making it to level two. Yeah, I'm at level okay. Two. It doesn't really change past this. Cool. Mick. Mick Muse. We'll see if I can do it. I don't know if I will though. Um, you did pretty good. It would. It would. You got. You got the sword. You made it to the to the dragon. You had a lot of lives too. Yeah, I think I you had at least two I lives. I wasn't doing terrible. No. <laughs> the way you guys keep adding games to the marathon, you're gonna need more than twelve hours. It's a good point. Quite possibly. Well, it's the plan is is to just load us up with like a bunch of. Uh... Oh, I gotta make sure that I have the stacks and this game in our twelve hour. I just want to make sure we have enough games to go to. That's that's the key, right? That we're there, not like, man. oh, what do we do? What do we do? Right. I, I want to get some extra health. I'm, I was like, oh, I'll skip it, but no, oh, I don't have the stacks. Yeah, definitely the stacks. Hey, hey. Also, hey. we're going to be doing hey. it for 12 hours, Stop so... It. Yes, that's a lot of time. The stacks, and... Oops, Stone Catacomb. Brand new game. Ah. I want, I want that mushroom. I mean... Yeah, that's all you're looking for really right now is a mushroom because until level five, you might as well just straight, head straight for the uh, ladders as much yeah, as you can. Yeah, but I, but I definitely like want to clear all the early ones because it's a lot easier to clear them. Oh, there's no point. But, but I need a mushroom. Oh, Because I need four yes, health. That's right. And the mushroom camp comes pretty early. Um, it's, it? it's random every time. Everybody has the potential to drop either meat, coin, mm. or a mushroom. Mm. Which okay. makes it like so, like tactics wise, it makes way more sense to like do it early. Yeah, because oh, if I can get yeah, an, yeah. if I can get a if I can get an extra life early, that just sets me up for success. Yeah. But I'm yet to see one. <laughs> we'll see. Militant Buddha says this one interests me. If this one interests me too, man. Yeah, it it feels so it's, good it's, playing it's it. It's a great, yeah, it's just a smooth ride. Everything moves smoothly. It, I it's love great the controls. running. Yeah, the running. If Without that running, it'd be like, oh, I have to slog through the maze. Oh, see, Attack from below or behind. These guys. There you go. There you're set go. up that's, now. That's what we want. Now I would head to level five as quick as you can. And the cat's vomiting. Buddy. Oh, no. Oh, kitty. Three. I just... And you gotta fight this one. Yeah, see, this is where maybe, like, Palau through is the smartest. But you don't gain anything. You only possibly lose things by fighting people. It's a good point. That's, it, you can maybe gain meat, but it's so seldom you might as well only try to gain it when you are forced to fight people. I yeah. think. It's a good point. Although these guys are, like, a bit easier than the next guys. Yeah. Ones that don't throw. No. Ugh, Max bad. out's at four. I'm going. Max is out at four, though. Your lives. Yeah, I need meat. That's what I need. Whoa. Whoa, a broom with a big scorpion in it. There you go. Get belong. Poke him. Dude, okay, thank God. That's really good. <laughs> oh, nice. Level four. Level five. Okay, I want Time that to sword. Find the sword. Do not leave till you find it. Wow, blocked it, man. That's lovely. Ah, good. It's hard to do. It's See, this really is where I think it. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Unless I get some meat. Give me some yeah, meat. Yeah, you only have one more hit left. There you go. Well, at least I'm clearing There's stuff. A bit of there. That's something. Oh. It makes sense, yeah, though. It does. It's tough. It was bound to, bound to happen. Okay. Fuck. When you get the sword, you get full health again, which is nice. Yeah, and, he, and then you feel so bad about yourself if you lose it. <laughs> so bad. Yay. And I would... No point. This is no where you point. just push to the end, man. Right to the end. And just be cautious. Play it super cautious so you don't lose. Oh, there we go. Oh, it has a bit of a distance. Yes! Dude! You are full, full, full now. Ah. Oh, no, no, run, 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 run! Holy shit. 
You're doing really Holy good. Holy shit, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Give him lots of space. Yeah. Okay, lots I'm just fucking going around because that's yeah. nothing's there. It's just a dead end. It might open up at something. Though. Whoa. No. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter because like. It does though. Because um, I still have like a bunch of life. That's that is true. I can so die don't, like. As long as you don't lose the life, you're good. In there all honesty, go. we're wise is just to push. Yeah, you are. Yeah, that is true. Don't bother messing around with them at this point because you were down one health. Well, I've already been hurt, so it's That's like true. as long as I. Yes. They're hey. having so much playing, fun playing this sim amazingly simple game. Oh, you're there. You just have to get him as much as you can. Just go right up to him and just smack him. There you go. Now you've got the projectile. Oh, but he probably resets. Yeah, he probably does. But that's okay. Okay. Nice. Oh, it's just in the head. It's just the head. <gasps> Damn yeah, it. It's okay. You did it. Hey. Oh god, okay, I got one, but I got like we got like Three, way two more to go. <laughs> we got another two dragons, but at least I killed one dragon. Yes, that's what. Oh, we this is the keep this is the um uh loot room. I oh, believe, right? bonus. Because as I oh, killed yeah. it, it's good that we killed one dragon and I got some meat. Oh, you get all this loot. Some stuff. Thanks, dragon. Nice. And I, I mean, got this is a simple game, but it's so it's it's challenging enough. I mean, it's not even that simple. Shit, like, man, look at this. Like, I got, like, all my, oh, all wow. my shit back. Okay, that's really well that's balanced. A, it's a big bonus at the end. You, like, powered all the way up again. Oh, boy. It fell in the rooms. Three guys now. I just feel like they're moving a little quicker. Yeah, they are. They're things. not shooting, though. Just I want weird. my coins. Oh, that's okay. Bonus round. Yeah, that's a super bonus. This is amazing this was made in 30 days. This is a really good game. Unbelievable. Like game. <laughs> is it worth it? Yeah, this is yeah, you're down, full. man. You're full. I'm, I'm crushing it. Okay, 11. Whoa, there's the fire guy. Can it, cause it, can it be I think killed? You can try and shoot him, but I don't think you will be able to. I don't think it to. does anything. No. It's probably like a just a guard. Get out of my way, Jawas. Try and shoot it now. Oh, you oh. can. Maybe you can kill it. Yep, okay. Okay. But it it is annoying. Not quite as annoying as that thing that follows you. Nice. That's for sure. That's good. That is good. McMew says, thanks guys, it's really fun seeing someone else playing it. We haven't found any bugs. No whatsoever. man, this is a cool like, game. It's I'm into super, this. Super, super solid game. Oh see. And I love the stakes of the Master Sword. Oh, it's so good. Like, you hit, get hit once, your superpower you is gone. you feel terrible about yourself, too. Oh, you no. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, my God. There's fire and the Jawa. Oh, you're doing pretty good. That Super Sword is very powerful. But I have, but you have to, like... Those coins are brilliant. I love them. Oh, my God. Okay. Ah, no, see, the dream's lost, <laughs> friends. The dream is gone. Oh. We had the dream. Uh, Trey says, yes, this game is so much better than most of the games I bought in the early 80s. Oh my god, this game would clean up in the 80s. Fuck, man. Okay, this is where, like, see, this is, that's, uh, see, this is where our... It's where the, it gets it tough. Gets intense. Yeah. Whoa, Whoa, see, he spit his things at me. Yep. <laughs> oh, that guy's tough. Oh my god, and see, this thing's like on top of me. Wow, too. he's tough. Oh. No food reward. It's getting wrecked. Oh, it's cool that that level was just that, though. Yeah. Wow. Well, at least you can retreat. I just don't want to be in this dungeon anymore. <laughs> Look, it's like I go in and it's just like bo bombardment. Oh, fuck. And then look at this thing. It's like... Oh. Yeah, and then I have like... Oh, oh. Fucking, even with the Master Sword, it's nothing. Okay. Yeah, because it's so tightly packed that even with the Master Sword, you're forced into a situation where you're going to get hit. And it's and like... projectiles, you know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Death. But, but I think it should be this hard at this level. Oh, yeah, man. You've already defeated a dragon. It's Absolutely. And I think 13. I'm zoning in on, like, a dragon. 
Yeah, see, uh, it rip. should be level 16, right? Like arcade venture, a hundred times better. Yeah, it's very much oh, like God. venture. Yeah, see, like it doesn't have moving walls though. I'm uh, kind of like, like I'm kind of running out of. Uh, there you go. I'm like, oh God, keep that. Fuck it, man. I'm not even going. You're just looking for ladders. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm trapped. I thought I was stuck for a second. Oh, you shot the. Oh, so stressed. No coins. <laughs> I, I was, um... Oh, good job. Oh, yeah. I need a mushroom. Oh, oh my god. The maze is getting bigger? Oh. No! The dream was alive and it's gone. Just head for the ladder. There you go. Oh, I think this is my last life, though, man. It is. See if you can make it to the second dragon. Just try and find a ladder. Oh, god. At least that's easy. This is... Let's just at least see the second dragon. Oh, I don't know if we'll be able to. This is a lot. I mean, like, these are... These are not easy levels. Although these scorpions are, are doable again. I'll just exit. Well, I figure... Uh -oh. I, I figured... <gasps> Food. Oh, oof, oof, oof. Whoa, that was close. It just about Whoa. disappeared. Whoa. What is happening? Cats. Oh, I'm trying to get the timing right. Okay, good. I'm so scared to like enter any room. Okay. Hey! Okay. The dream, oh. James. One life and full health. Oh, you do have a projectile, so. Whoa! Oh, he's moving fast. Nope. Get hit. Oh, fuck. Oh. No, I just pushed it through. Yeah. Good stuff. Oh, well, at least we got to level 16, Second yeah. Dragon. And I, if, if I was taking it more seriously... Um, I think you could do a Second Dragon. I could probably do a Second... I, I could probably beat this game if I spent all day on it. <laughs> yes. But I'd have to spend all day on it. Oh, shit, I'm spinning everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, today's games... Holy cow, wow, what a show! What a, Jesus. What, what a that two, was a th almost force. a three and a half hour. This is like a Lord of the Rings level. It is. Show, man. So let's go through them. Gorilla Force, Amazing Contra. Quarter um, of the marathon. Is that oh right? Oh my god, that is true. <laughs> oh. Over over a quarter of the marathon. Damn. Just over. Yeah, yeah. With four games. Oh boy, maybe we have too many games <laughs> for the marathon. Oh. Ah. Yes, so Gorilla Force, amazing start. Yeah, huge. Um, Super. It's, it's going to be really really popular because it's contra and there is nothing like that on the 2600 right now that is like that totally S scrolling shooting just multi -level. clean up that gameplay and and that's it's just it. yeah it's just a start right now he's got yeah. the, he's got the basics um wushu masters actually a really decent looking amazing fighter. like quality like a oh design for that is the unreal graphics of the backgrounds are unbelievable probably the most detailed i've ever seen on any atari 2600 game and um, I'll be interested to see how it plays when they sl when he slows down the fighting and yeah. he, and there's hit detection. Robot Zed, obviously amazing. I, I've I've loved that game since I've I saw it come out a couple years ago. I'm glad he has a a, a demo that's playable now that people can play. Um, and Mega Man has always been like a dream for the 2600 and it's got the right elements just enough oh that's elements. a fun game i like that one i want to i want more of that <laughs> yeah level one was too easy yeah, level yeah. One. but well, it's level one it should be easy well yeah um deep stone catagome amazing game unbelievable so I like this good. a lot it's smooth run really challenging really really good you made it to level 16 on and and there's a harder level level two and then, yeah. then a, ran, a random level. And you can level just push three. and push and push and, and push. And see how, how deep you can get. How did you manage to handle three monsters on screen? Yeah, they are definitely limited in motion. They were bounded by each other. Yeah. So they won't go on side by side to avoid the flicker. But you didn't feel that, did you? No, you man. You felt like, I, oh my god, they're all over me. Yeah, right? it was. It's. It, it's. Just, I think the coolest choice design choice in that game is making the Master Sword on full life. Yes, so it was limited. Yeah, it's, it's special. It really makes you, and it also makes you feel like a lot more stressed oh, when you get hit. And if you get hit, it's the worst feeling. It's in stressful the world. having the sword. Yeah, because you don't <laughs> want to too lose much it. Power. It's, it's too so much. good. <laughs> um, so thanks a lot for hanging out, Mick. 
and, yeah, man. All, and all the other developers as well. Absolutely. And and answering the everybody's uh, questions in the in the chat. That's why we do this show. It's sharing information and pushing developers to make better and better games, and you know, learning from each other. Oh, look know. at that title screen. It's, it's beautiful amazing. with the fire. Um. Yeah, I don't have much else to say. No. Uh, let's see what's coming up next episode. Um, we're going to be, on Friday, we're going to be going for the uh, patch in Spider Fighter. Cool. Round two. We played round one and got really close. Um, and then next Wednesday is another big day, I believe. Um, yeah, let's check it out. The forums have changed, so I can't really... So yeah, it's your, you, you, you just don't know your, your my shortcuts. Stuff, yeah, and so my shortcuts are all changed. Okay, we're going to be playing, um, if it all follows through, that might need to be pushed, um, playing with the Quadtari hardware. We're going to be playing four-player games. Okay, cool. Um, Next Wednesday? We're going to be playing Galaga. We're going to be playing Wizard of War Arcade. We're going to be playing the Quad games um, on next Wednesday. And those are all utilizing the... Uh, splitters like the four-way splitter i've got it here i can show you guys i've been using the quad tari splitter here um where you plug two joysticks in and it goes out to f you plug four joysticks in it and it goes out to the four ports wow and i've got the some more prototypes of the dual tari i don't know if he has a name for it yet um that is like one part of this it's like yeah it almost fits like that Ah, oh, cool. And uh, and he's got a quad game. You're going to need a bigger couch for uh, sure, man. We are, yeah, uh, for the four players on uh, on the twenty on the 12 hours. And he's got a thing called Quad Tari, which is four tanks playing at once. And then he's got Quad Joust, which is four Joust players oh, playing dude, once. I'm in. Going at each other. And, and I put that the day before... Or the Wednesday before the twelve hour, because we will be able to play four player versions of that. On yeah, the, we'll on be able to Friday. test and see how it all goes. Yes. So thanks everybody for hanging out. Let me just read off some names. The people who stayed to the very very end of our super marathon: um, Militant Buddhist, RC Seventy, Zach Scalero, Trey Guy, uh, Mick Muse, Dan ABC, I is supposed to, um, Nathan. Nathan Strum. Uh, arena arena foot was jumped in here for a little bit i don't know if he's still here and some other people that were here in the beginning dianoid was here hey. uh, awesome um thrust thomas yentz was here oh arena foot's back so thanks everybody for yeah, tuning man. in today it was a big marathon but we had a lot to catch up stuff. on because we've been away for a month and now we'll be back into normal Normal three-hour shows now. <laughs> yeah, you we know. try and keep it under two hours, but sometimes it just it's happens, too much. man. Wednesdays is cool because we don't, you know, all, all I have to do is like I, yeah. I teach a class in the evening, so I have all day to oh, like. Thomas is still hang here. Out. Hey, yeah, Thomas. and I try and make sure I have a buffer at the end as well because sometimes we do go long, and sometimes it's a quick little two-hour thing, and you're Nathan like Nathan Strum's yeah. still here. Uh, good show, the little I caught. I'll have to get the first three quarters on reruns. <laughs> yeah, we'll be posting this tomorrow on youtube um so you can check it out there hell yeah after 11 a.m because i have a 24-hour window i can't post it in that's the agreement you go with for uh for, for, for twitch which makes yeah. sense yeah um so thanks everybody for hanging out we'll see you on friday uh we'll be starting at 6 p.m and i'll be here with tanya uh 6 p.m pacific time 9 p.m eastern and 1 a.m gmt and i'll see you next wednesday yep and we'll be back next wednesday at same time 11 a.m pacific time 2 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT. So thanks for hanging out with Zero Page Homebrew. And uh, we'll play some more games next time. That sounds good. Bye. Bye-bye.